And hello, Internet. Welcome to session number 25 of Land Beyond the Mist. Uh, it is a pre-Turkey Day misting, um, as it was being discussed in the chat. Uh, welcome, everyone. I am excited to play another Dungeons & Dragons game. Uh, tonight, we have some returning faces out here going on their own custom quest, making one without even using the job board. Always exciting when people have their own goals in mind. So I'm going to turn it over to our players here to give themselves a little bit of an introduction, remind us of the characters they've brought to the table, and let's jump in and play. Uh, just going around the call here in Discord, let us start with uh, Discord Spot. Uh, hi, um, I'm Discord Spot. I'm playing uh, Grand Axiom, the wizard of necromancy, the necromancer, I guess, um, and the wandering potion maker. Uh, yeah, I, I'm uh, bringing him back, and uh, last session was a, another successful mission, and uh, in, since then he uh, uh, learned another spell from his uh, lens wizard, that's what we're going to call her now, uh, uh, spell book, and um, yeah, he also found a very nice uh, um, wand of magic missiles, which he intends to use a lot, and um, yeah, he's ready for another adventure. All right, excellent. Welcome back to the table, uh, Grant. Uh, next up, we have Horo. Thank you for filling in. I appreciate it. Uh, who are you bringing to the table today? I'm going to be playing Norbert, the Great Wall of the Mists, I guess. Um, you know, he was super happy to finally get rid of all these wizards and, you know, go on adventure with some, like, real men, like, hardy men. But he got the summons, and he's back with this wizard, and Alex is joining him again, I'm guessing, after, you know... We didn't uh, complete the quest together for for the cave, so this time Norbert is joining him to help him on his mission. So let's see how it goes. I see. Excellent. Uh, well, uh, hopefully you will find all the manly men you can uh, ever ask for in today's party. Um, next up, uh, we have Leova. Welcome back. Um, repping the domino still. I like it. <laughs> Go ahead and give yourself a bit of an introduction. Hey, hey. Uh, I gotta gotta wrap it. It's, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Pays the bills. You know what I'm saying? Um, hi, I'm uh, Leova. I um, I just play a lot of D and D uh, in person and online. And uh, today I'm bringing Alex. Um, Alex is a former adventurer's assistant uh, turned bearer of the Titan Slayer Gauntlet, which now defines his entire identity and existence. Um, and I have recently gotten uh, some nice fancy new art for Alex, which we will see here shortly. Uh, he is looking spiffy and feeling good. Awesome. Uh, I'm happy to have him back. I do like the, the art that you got. It was pretty cool. All right. Uh, last but certainly not least, we have King Lyoko. Why don't you give yourself a bit of an introduction? Yeah. Hey, I'm King Lyoko. I am bringing back Monsieur um, Mortimer. Uh, he is a, a monk, a healer, studier of micro monsters, and uh, well, today he's a studier of skeleton kings. Mm, very cool. Well, speaking of skeleton kings, uh, it was Monsieur Mortimer who got this band of crazy people together to go adventuring out. Uh, he is, you are going to di like research or um, explore the Mathwin Sepulcher to get an understanding of uh, the mysteries that surround the crown that you picked up in an earlier session. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what your plan is and uh, how you got your crew together here to help you out? Sure, sure. So uh, I believe at this point, uh, Monsignor Mortimer has ventured with most, if not all, of these fine fellows. So he he's known them, and you know he knows who to call when a dangerous job needs doing, when a mystery needs unfolding. Um, now for uh, for this quest, as you said, it is a custom quest, and it dates back to a series of random encounters, uh, as skeletons in the night that sort of culminated over several sessions in an attack on a group of NPC adventurers um, that the party was too late to, to save. Um, but it involved
involved a skeleton king, or at least a skeleton wearing a crown that was later determined um, through various uh, lore checks to be the crown of the former king of Rhymeview, who had supposedly died during the war between Rhymeview and Rustport, uh, like five years back before uh, the season started. And we'd also found, uh, mostly burned in the, in the fire of the adventurers, like a note regarding a meeting uh, on what we've determined to be the Siren Isles. Um, there aren't many specifics, but it seemed that the skeletons were trying to either burn the note or trying to find the note. We're, there's still some debate about which one it is. So we sort of got two destinations in mind. Um, mm-hmm. Like you said, the Mathurin Sepulcher, uh, because if you look into the lore that uh, Greg provided uh, all the way at the start, Math- the Mathwin Sepulcher is sort of where the nobles, the wealthy of Rhymeview, go to be buried. And so our thought is, you know, if there's some sort of cover-up or mystery regarding what actually happened to the former king of Rhymeview, you know, we could see whether his body is actually buried in the Mathwin Sepulcher. Uh, and then secondly, we want to go to the site of that meeting in the Siren Isles. There's a cabin on a, on a specific island that was mentioned in the notes. Mm-hmm. Very good. Well, I think there was also one minor uh, detail as well. On the Dead Adventures, we, you also found a, a, like a scroll case or something with the symbol of a minor noble house of Shallow's Rest. Also, interest. Yeah, yes, and they yeah. were and they were paid uh, almost entirely in shallow rest coinage, apparently. So there was certainly a sense, uh, either on behalf of or by someone in shallow rest, to do this meeting. Uh, which, not sure with who. Uh, there's some thought it might be with uh, Thornrest, trying to re- set that alliance somehow. But that's just a thought in, in the blue somewhere. All right. We're not entirely sure yet. So, you are going to be adventuring out and exploring the sepulcher and perhaps this isle. Um, great. How did you get your crew together? Tell us a little about that. So, yeah. So, I mean, like I said, Mortimer had adventured with, you know, Grand, with Alex. Um, I think... I'm not sure if he had actually ventured with Norbert yet. I don't think so. No. Um, so, he knew to call a Grand, obviously. He's... He is skilled in the arts of the dead, um, you know, for better or for worse. <laughs> so when dealing with the undead, you know, you got to call someone. And then, of course, I mean, who wouldn't want someone with a sword arm? Yep. Facts. And, and, <clears throat> and uh, Alex would have would have uh, earnestly recommended uh, Norbert. It's probably stands in the lines of, I am now the sword, and I've heard that he is the shield. Or the wall, perhaps. Wall. Very Indeed. cool. I think Grand, because he's in the party as well, would would give a good word for me as well. As yes. I believe I've been with him on adventures for about like six times in a row now, which <laughs> needs to stop. But probably. Yeah. Well, maybe not. There's a there's a there's a very fun like um, like odd couple thing happening with you two. Like uh, I love it. For, for Gron, right. it was first. So. It was first uh, Mortimer. He was on like three times, and then after that, he switched him out for uh, Norbert, and now it's both. <laughs> <laughs> well, perfect. It's a grand reunion of people who have adventured before to uncover this mystery. So, you sit together in the tables of the Cloak and Stagger, uh, drinking and planning your actions out. Um, is there anything that you want to take care of in town in Rhymeview before heading out into the um, mist to f- do your uh, adventuring and your investigating? Uh, I, I just want to say, like, for the record, uh, I, as I alluded to in my intro, uh, Gron learned another spell from this Lens Wizard's book, uh, a second level spell, Misty Step. Ooh, but they did that before, before they met, met up. Okay. So I spent. So are you using it to prank us, or? (laughs) All right. You spent your gold. You've learned your spell. Is there anything you want to do in town now, other than spend your gold on that spell? Oh, I. Go ahead. 
No, Sorry, uh, Norbert would like to do a couple of things, if possible. Okay. First of all, would Norbert be able to find a big brass brazier in town? Mm, yes, of course you can find a big brass uh, brazier in town. Uh, the uh, the Arcanium Council will have them available to rent. Uh, you can buy them from uh, different merchants around town if you have the coin to spend and the place to put it. Um, but uh, the, as a town that services adventurers, uh, the f fine familiar spell is something that uh, is you know readily available for people to try out. Absolutely. And with his newfound power, Norbert is going to channel the arcane for the very first time of his life. And he would like to, after obviously purchasing all the necessary equipment, to cast the spell Find Familiar. All right. And if possible, I was hoping for you to be able to either roll or tell me which familiar I get rather than choosing myself, as I don't want to be very generic and go for another owl in the party. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, why don't we why don't we roll dice then, huh? Sure. All right. Uh, roll oh, yes, for me a d10. Ben? As you cast your gaze into the flames of the fire and you uh, enchant your spell and tapping into the eldritch night powers that you've gotten, uh, you feel a tingle on the back of your brain. A, echo of a memory of the voice of a stone and coming out of the fire is your very own familiar imp wow okay that's awesome thank yes. you yes that's great wow. what kind of what kind of imp is it yeah uh, what does this imp look like Just this is a people. small black creature uh that huddles together um, with like big bulging shoulders and over long hands and a tail that squirrels up like a corkscrew. All I'm going to say is this is very fitting after Norbert being possessed by an arc devil <laughs> <Yeah>. last time. <laughs> It'll immediately pop up on your shoulder, all hunched over, looking around at all of your party members. Mortimer definitely like, or gives it a, a like a, mm, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, he doesn't say anything. Yeah, Grant definitely raises an eyebrow as well. All right. Um, mm. uh, Alex, uh, Alex would just <laughs> would just look at look at this little imp, kind of looking him up and down, glance at himself, his own black armor, look back at the imp, and give him like a yeah, looking good. <laughs> the I imp think, understands I'm, what you mean it gives you a thumbs up I think Norbert is gonna give him a good old like pet on his back and he's gonna unsummon him almost as quickly as he summoned him as he doesn't want anyone seeing this thing out in the open <laughs> and he disappears back into the fire <laughs> exactly <laughs> probably dangerous to walk around town with one of those on your shoulder yeah, that's what I was thinking, yeah. <laughs> um, so speaking about town, though, uh, one person I definitely want to go see is the representative for the Conclave of the Faithful. Yes, um, you and Tom. I think, yes, I think you and Tom's would have some good advice for us. Okay, absolutely. Uh, you will make your way to the, like, open air, um, like worship area of the uh, conclave's headquarters, uh, a nice agora with uh, statues and grass growing uh, as people are, you know, silently uh, praying or having close conversations with each other. Uh, you will find you and Tom's uh, just kind of tending to people, uh, stopping by uh, different uh, groups and making sure they have everything they need. Eventually, you will. Uh, he will catch uh, eyes with you and make his way over. Uh, he says, oh, welcome. Uh, what, what can I do for you today? Ah, hello, uh, Brother Ewan. Um, may we speak some more privately? I have a matter that is somewhat... Um... Oh? Why, of course, of course, of course. Well, follow me. 
And this large halfling waddles his way deeper into the uh, conclave grounds, uh, finding, like, essentially a small confessional booth for you. Um, he says, oh, all right, tell me, what what is on your mind, my son? Sure. Uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of a, a story to what's currently relevant here, uh, and I'd like to sort of proceed to summarize uh, what I told chat about the encounters with the skeletons, the skeleton king, you know, about the, the crown and its believed mm. significance, and uh, uh, the note. And uh, basically uh, coming back into, into the narrative. Um, and so, uh, Brother Ewan, what I'm hoping to do now is go and set out to determine the origins of this necromantic activity in the area. You know, try to unravel the mystery of all of this. Is uh, something that related to the Fallen King, you know? Oh, um, And I... I'm just wondering what you would suggest. Is it possible that, you know, the mystery, the answer to the mystery lies in the Mathurin Sepulcher? Is it, is it, wow. is there possible to access that? I know that it's usually reserved for the nobility, the aristocrats. It is, it is possible to access the sepulcher. It is not uncommon to go and pay respects to the kings of the past. Um, as for whether or not the um, mystery may be related, uh, I, I suppose it is not out of the question. There are many powerful dead laid to rest there. Um, should one be disturbed, who knows um, what uh, what powers they, they might be able to summon. Uh, it would be quite concerning indeed to have... Uh, Powerful Mathwin, uh, roaming the undeath. Uh, I would, I would hope that we could lay them to rest, uh, pacify the, the ill intent, and uh, restore them to a restful afterlife. That is my hope as well, my brother Ewan. Yes. And uh, I, I likewise hope that the Conclave would be supporting, or at least, um, mm. you know, approving of our mission. Oh, I will. I will definitely make sure that there are no questions from our end. Uh, if you need access to the sepulcher, I actually, um, for a quest as noble as this, I would happily be able to find you a seal of ours uh, uh, to give you that uh, that access. The other part of what I was thinking before I rambled on, as I am oft wont to do, uh, I have heard there's been some disturbance in the sepulchre. Not uh, all that uh, recently, but uh, the lower chambers, uh, where the the true royals are buried, uh, has been uh, closed to the public for some time. Uh, So uh, you will need our seal to get in, but I will happily provide it for you. Uh, Give me just a a moment to to speak with the, the higher council and... I will make sure that uh, we impart it upon you. Uh, you. You have my thanks, brother. Oh, of course, of course. You have done good work for the Conclave. Um, and he leaves you in his in the confessional for some time uh, before coming back with, like, an official seal of the um, Conclave. It's on, a like, a folded piece of parchment. It's been wax-sealed. Uh, it could be broken and open to read, essentially. And he says, All right. This will uh, grant you access. Uh, I wish you uh, good fortune and uh, bright paths on a dark journey. We'll make sure to report back any findings we make. Excellent. Um, Alex, Alex um, thanks him as well. Um, and oh my god, he, I didn't uh, realize we were in here. This book is really <laughs> made for just, uh, one uh, person. Uh, uh, Alex, Alex steps out of the, the shadow of his you know, black armor, just fully covered. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not quite used to this yet. I'm a little too stealthy for my own good sometimes. Oh, Please, it, it, excuse me. And he, and he bows deeply. You deep, almost gave this poor half like a heart attack. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, Alex, Alex thank you as well. He has done some uh, work with the Conclave. And he will actually ask you and um, say, um, good Sir Tom's. Um, yes. might I ask, uh, a small favor? Um, sure. Um, I, what can I do for you? Hopefully not too much of a bother. Um, I seek a location, um, 
uh, some were sacred, some were honorable, to perform a brief ceremony, a, um, a team bonding exercise of sorts with my uh, party before we leave. Oh. Um, and also to uh, bless us for our journey. Um, I may ask that we perhaps use one of your rooms, and if, and you might join us as well. We will gladly have your company. Oh, um, I, I suppose I could join you, although I, I see little reason for me to be presiding over your ceremony, but uh, I, I can well, observe, I suppose. To be honest, um, sir, it, it is partially a team-building exercise, but also a... Um, ceremony for this, and he kind of like flexes his shoulder forward. You see there is a restless spirit trapped deep within this black metal. Oh. And I um, seek a, a minor, um, a spiritual tourniquet of sorts, to calm it. I see. Well. Wow. My, uh, my party possesses the appropriate magic. But I feel it uncouth to be casting such spells in a tavern or out in the streets. Sure. Um, a, 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 a holy place is more appropriate for such things. Uh, he looks to the two of you and, and furrows his brow and says, I, I believe I can provide a sanctum for that. Uh, we, we don't usually do so on such short notice, but uh, if you truly have a evil spirit in that arm of yours, and it's probably good to apply some kind of tourniquet to it. Um, Alex will nod and bow and thank him. And um, is uh, Norbert here as well? Is he also in the confessional? <laughs> uh, I, don't, in the I, I will be honest. Norbert, even though he started as a cleric, I don't think he ever even introduced himself like to anybody from the divine realm in the village. <laughs> right. um, well, if you have no objections, Alex will, will ask you to, to join them in the ceremony. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and hopefully um, Ewan will take us somewhere nice. I, uh, I just imagine me summoning my imp in the middle of a church by accident. So I'm just like, <laughs> I'm summoning him again. Uh, yes, he takes you to a sanctum. Uh, Ewan Toms is a worshipper of the sun. And so you are in a sanctum uh, inside the kind of deeper confines of the conclave's building away from kind of the open-air generalist area. Here, there's a, a large altar with emblazoned in, like, a large sunburst. There's a, a vaulted <clears> ceiling <throat> with an opening in it that, uh, like, right at noon, you would assume the sun would come right down into the uh, sanctum itself uh, atop the sunburst. There are, um, you know, holy scriptures written upon the, like, pillars of the room. Uh, he lights some candles... Uh, and kind of just stands in the back uh, and uh, ushers the three of you in. Says, "Please, by all means." Um, Grand is welcome to join as well. Would he be interested in watching? Oh, uh, yeah, he he would be watching like from the side. I think yeah. He okay, goes and cool. stands with you and Tom's in the corner. Like, all right, let's see this. Um, so Alex will will walk uh, towards the center uh, of the room. And then he'll he'll like, uh, like, like angle himself slightly and pull off his arm, and place it down uh, in the center of the room. Um, okay. He knows okay. that um, in such a manner he's very vulnerable. Anyone can come up and try and take it, but he trusts his party and Ewan Tom's uh, completely. There's no issue with that, mm -hmm. and he will walk back out to the circle, and you know join his um, his party there. And um, he's not uh, like a, a magical user himself. He's not a wizard. He's not a cleric. But he's seen enough ceremonies. He's participated uh, as an assistant to enough, like you know, acolytes and such. That he knows uh, where to where to like you know uh, bow and where to say you know soft nothings. Um, and he will um, close his eyes uh, and he will say um, Mortimer. Uh, Norbert, please, uh, a blessing. Um, and out of game, um, he will um, be asking you guys to cast uh, Bless, uh, Gentle Repose, and Sanctuary, uh, like directly into the, the gauntlet. Just to like let it absorb 
good, holy, peaceful magic, and to kind of like, you know, give it a nice good vibe. If possible, to give a, another advice, maybe maybe Norbert is going to be casting the spell called Ceremony, just to make it like completely official. I will take 25 oh, gold have, pieces. That, that is amazing. Uh, in that yes. case, Alex will, Alex will get down on one knee and he will propose to... No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Marry the sword. Exactly. No, but Norbert is casting Ceremony just to uplift the spells of... Uh, what Mortimer okay. is casting, like Sanctuary so and, I, and stuff I like that. I am intrigued by all of this preparation here. So after you cast all these spells, what is your intent uh, for the effect of all of these spells here once they are done? If they, everything is successful and goes the way you want, what is your intent? So uh, basically it's, it's just a sort of um, calming influence. Uh, I know that um, the spirit trapped within is a mighty warrior used to dueling fighting fell in battle uh, alex took the gauntlet by a battle it's always been battle and fighting and fighting and battle and battle so it'll be good and it will, i think calm the mind of the spirit inside maybe help it be more accessible to future divinations and like uh, mm -hmm. approaches just to have a bit of calm amongst all the madness okay all right uh, so you begin this ceremony. Um, there is 25 gold pieces worth of incense and... Oh. Um, I, will, yes. I apologize. Uh, one last thing. Uh, there's also the spell Locate Object, which I believe uh, someone here in the party has. Um, the And the intent of that is to kind of create like a gentle compass in a direction of where another piece of the Titan Slayer gauntlet or clues to the spirit's identity might be. Mm. So it's like a, it's like a two part thing, one to calm and one to hopefully get like a gentle pointer somewhere, somehow. I see. Okay. Uh, so you, you light 25 gold pieces worth of incense and sacramental waters and whatever else is required for your ceremony. Uh, you speak the, the words of the ceremony, you do the appropriate gestures, uh, and a locate object spell is woven into the magics. Um, as this happens, um, I want you, Leova, to give me a religion, uh, intelligence check, and I'll give you advantage for your, uh, roleplay and the assistance of your party members here. Uh, the DC um, is going to be a rolling DC. Um, a partial success will be 15 or better, and a complete success will be 20 or better. Could you let me give him guidance as well? Um, no, I, I think, think this is, time, but... I think this is uh, Sans guidance. I think you're doing the the um, advantage, the ceremony for the advantage and stuff. Yeah. 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 All right. Perfect. That is a 20. Perfect. All right. Nice. At the conclusion of your ceremony, um, as you place the gauntlet back on your, your shoulder, uh, you feel a um, calmness, perhaps, that you did not uh, feel before. Uh, the... the kind of coolness of uh, serenity as opposed to the fires of rage that perhaps you weren't even aware you were feeling up until this point. Um, and as you uh, place this on, you feel a pull, an attraction to the east, uh, as if there is something over far to the east uh, that is like almost like a, a weak magnet kind of pulling at your arm. Okay, perfect. Uh, Alex will put it on and feel the, the the good vibes, like putting on like a cold compress after like a big exercise, mm -hmm. and he'll feel that gentle like tug, that pull to the east, and he'll uh, nod solemnly, um, say nothing regarding that, but then turn and thank his allies and you and Tom's and Ron as well. All right. Um, as you put that back on, Leova, give me a uh, D8, please. Okay. 
You feel five of your lost hit points, maximum hit points, return to you. Fantastic. Uh, Alex, like, flexes it and sort of, like, puts it back into, like, uh, like a neutral position. Mm-hmm. And then he smiles and, like, is, is happy that the spirit is calm. Good. Awesome. I think you see you and Tom's, like, with a scroll out, like, just jotting notes furiously as he watches all of this happening. Yeah. Um, Alex will um, approach him after and, and say, uh, if you like, I can stay for a, for a brief um, session if you want to. Oh, yes, that'd be great. Here, come with me. We'll go to <laughs> one of those confessionals that are deeper than I thought they were. There was four of you in those shadows. Uh, and he, he just, like, yep. will interview you for an hour, picking your brain for the ceremony. Excellent. After the ceremony, I think Norbert is going to go for a high five and regret it almost instantly. <laughs> uh, Alex now knows to high five with his other hand. So it's a little awkward, but like it's uh, it's there. I feel like you got some sense into your old hand back and you were just like, uh, oh, you know, <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. out of habit. All right. Well, with a very interesting ceremony done. Um, and uh, some a seal acquired. Is there anything else that you want to take care of here in town? Or are you ready to go on your adventure? Well, um, mm-hmm. go ahead. We had been sort of been debating whether to go to the Isles first or the Sepulchre. Have the rest of you come to a decision after this? Yeah, I, I still think we should go to the Isle first, just to, to get a lead, but... Yeah, I'm I'm open for anything. All right. Who has the highest int in the party? I'm guessing it's Grand, right? He's the wizard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably. Yeah, Norbert would lean with that, but Norbert would like to do one last thing in the city. Okay. Norbert has finally reached 50, 50 reputation with the Arcanium Council. Ooh! Wow. Quite quite a high number, correct? Quite. Dang. What oh, Norbert? You're even higher than me. Yep. What Norbert would like to do is he would like to go to a fully access library and inquire about the Pearl of Power and get some information about both the Isle and the Sepulchre. Ah, okay. Very good. Uh, as you... You would just want all of it. All right. You go to the uh, Arcanian <laughs> Council. There is a large tower... Uh, in the center of the like residential districts, uh, you will approach Rose Nix, uh, who is uh, happy, of course, to see such an esteemed uh, magician of the guild. Um, you ask for access to the uh, guild library, um, and she will take you not to one of the like common uh, cubbies that uh, you can rent out as a mundane, you know, uh, everyday user of the library. Uh, she instead takes you up a small flight of stairs into what is known as the restricted section. Um, here, there are old, musty tomes and locked doors that you can have complete privacy in. Uh, she hands you a small bronze key, which will unlock one of the doors, uh, and allows you to stroll around unfettered through the restricted section of the library. Uh, there is a cart that uh, you can... Uh, Load books on. Uh, You could also request uh, books from the common area of the library below brought to you. Um, And you wanted to speak about, or you wanted to research about uh, the aisles. What specifically are you looking for? Are you gathering information or are you just checking out a book on the aisles? So I am looking for information about specifically what we're going to the aisles for. I believe there's supposed to be some sort of a meeting between some undeads or like the skeleton, skeletal king, etc. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking about any information in regards to the undead, undead like creatures in that aisle in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, if, okay. if I may, if I may suggest, I think for the aisles itself, what we need most importantly is a, a, a good map. So we can actually find uh, the location that is hinted at in, in the in the in this letter. Um, uh, you're a smart smart boy. I think that Norbert isn't too concerned about the map. He's more concerned about what we're going to be facing. So 
I presume I presume Grand maybe says we need a map first, and Alex starts to pull out his indistinguishable nonsense map, and then Grand quickly says a good map. Alex yeah. Puts it <laughs> yeah, that sounds very Grand, and um, yeah, yeah. So I, I think my understanding is that they just selected the Siren Isles as a, a really out of the way place to make a secret meeting, and um, it's it's not really what is. What is there, you know? Uh, but like that's, to have a, a secret meeting place, and that's um, fine. That's actually, fine. What I'm assuming is that you know, if it's so far out of the way for everybody, it's not the first time they're using it. There probably have been sightings of them there before. Who they are, what they are. I just don't want to meta game too much. Like I go to the library and you jump, telling me you know what to research. I don't think that's you know quite fair. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I uh, I. Uh rewatched the episode basically all the way back when Greg told us and so basically what I gather and, and maybe Laura's changed who knows that's up to Greg but um w what he had said was that there was some like a, a specifically shaped island that had a cabin on it where the meeting was going to take place so hopefully that will be enough information you can do your research and locate it there because I don't imagine there are many people who live on the Siren Isles right except the big island which I don't think is like generally considered one of them yeah yeah um and alex is actually working on a different side theory uh he's actually gotten to his head that um if the adventurers were from shallow rest and the meeting is in the siren isles perhaps they're meeting someone from thorn rest as like a halfway point um he's he's kind of got that going in his head so if possible, um, he'd like to temporarily return his uh, Book of Legends. He'll, he'll thank Rose Nix and he'll say, and he'll tell her about the ceremony they had and how the book is, you know, has been useful and helpful thus far. And he'll ask uh, temporarily for a book of history, if they have one, about um, Shallow Rest and Thorn Rest and their relations and the history there. And Okay, uh, you can check out a book of... Uh... Uh, Thorn Restian history um, and their strained relationships with the House of Duskrin and the Old Fae. Uh, you have mm -hmm. that book. It has one charge in it. Uh, the You can expend that charge to um, gain advantage on any uh, skill check uh, that relates to Thorn Restian history and the um, House Duskrin uh, and the re relations that they have together. Uh, as long as you have the opportunity narratively to sit down and read or, um, you know, reference the book. No problem. Sounds good. Thank you. So, uh, all of that out of the way. Norbert, you will uh, go ahead and roll me a d20 plus your uh, relationship with the Arcanium Council, which will be, give you a plus five. Oh, I don't know why you keep asking me to roll it. It's every time the same outcome. I love it. <laughs> Uh, that will give you five questions about the Siren Isles, um, and I will give you answers that are contained here as you research. Hmm. First of all, uh, are they open-ended questions, or does it have to be like yes or no question? Uh, you can ask the question, and I will tell you what information that you can get from it. I would like to find some information about that particular small island is there any mention of it in any of the recordings like there the particularly no mention of a specific island but in the history of the siren isles you will know that they have often been used as clandestine rendezvous between nobility of various rival houses mm, so it's like a neutral ground to meet um yes but also secret yeah um, another question I would like to ask you is about any undead spotted in these land, like the Isles itself? Of in some the sort history of, note? of the Isles, there is little mention of the way of undead. Um, any undead spotted on there would be a new occurrence. Would the party like to give me some help when it comes to the questions? Um, yeah, um... I would wonder uh, if you want to ask it, perhaps about the um, like the ownership history of the Isles, who laid claim to them, uh, what who had the most, you know, what was going on in that regard. That 
might be interesting, it might not be useful at all. Um, so I don't know if that's a question that we want to ask. I think Norbert be believes that it's like a neutral ground, more likely, so it's not like he's too concerned about who lays a claim to these isles. Yeah, also I wanted to ask Greg these five questions. Is it only for the uh, Siren Isles or also for his second part uh, of the sepulchre? He didn't, uh, the isles. He didn't ask On about the researching the sepulchre, right? Well, I thought I heard that. Uh, yeah. I did, but we kind of zoned in on the Isles, which is okay. perfectly fine, because I feel like once Norbert starts going, he's like, oh, this is so much information, you know? Okay. And he just does one part. Okay. okay. Mortimer, um, any questions? I, I was going to say, like, so I know that this, like, the islands are kind of a dangerous area, because it's, like, rocky, straight, you know, like, dangerous for ships. I wonder if there are any, like, good, like, sea maps to help, like, especially if you're, like, trying to, like, take a rowboat out between the aisles, like any like safe passageways that can help us on like a, a travel check or something. Yes, so I would like to see like uh yes, so the question Norbert is gonna ponder is like what's the best way to navigate these aisles without a map? Because I don't believe it's gonna be mapped out properly. Uh, Unless there is a map obviously. <laughs> the best way to navigate the aisles is to not go to them. They are dangerous to sailors, and every experienced sailor will try their best to avoid them. Um, if you must do it, um, circumnavigating the isles is much safer than going between the isles. Um, ships that go between them very rarely return. Okay. Makes sense. So it would be better to buy a boat and like go around them until we get what we need. Um, few more questions, guys? Um, do, uh, what do we as a party know about the BFM aisle on the map? Me, yeah, me out, good. out of game, I'm a little bit fuzzy on it. It sounds like a big fucking mountain, but... Uh, yeah, know. so it's a, it's a holdover from a name from long ago maybe when the map was first being started and uh that island is not considered part of the siren isles uh that is the only inhabited island of that chain there is a, a small um like hold essentially from the city of shallow rest um the nobility there uh that has a plantation of some sorts and a small you know dock and city uh, that uh, he uses the resources of the isle trades a lot in obsidian um, as well as things like um, tropical uh, fruits uh, bananas, uh, coconut that type of thing uh, that you might not find on other islands outside of the um, non-guild uh, affiliated uh, islands just above uh, the uh, <clears throat> just above Cragmorn and to the east of Rustport so it, it stands to reason that um, while sailors will not voluntarily go to the Siren Isles, they would, or one would be able to find a ship to this island. Yes. I guess um, one mm -hmm. thing that would be good to know is any like monstrous threats besides obviously the namesake Sirens. Um, yeah, give yes. me the, the main threats, yeah. Okay. Uh, the Siren Isle threats that you can find. Obviously, the largest threat is Sirens. Uh, sirens are the namesake of the Isles after all. Uh, let's find the encounter table for this area. Um, kobolds. Uh, small velociraptors and uh, other dinos. Um, just kind of like not the big T-Rexes, but small, quick ones like that. Um, there has been a mention of um, walking wood um, and the, uh, like, rumors of a, of a large snail um, that uh, smushes other people. Huh. <laughs> and Dave, of course. There's there's no mention of Dave the Island in the books. Really? There's even the interesting. Alright. That is five questions. 
They have been asked. They have been answered. Uh, so, uh, you are done researching in the restricted section. You return your key. You go back to Rose Nix, and you wanted to ask about um, a pearl of power? Uh, pearls Correct. Of power, Just the price. Yes. Pearls of power are the unique uh, magic item in the uh, Arcanium Council. There is no other place in the mist where you can get a pearl of power. Uh, they will sell it to you um, at a discount. Um, do they will sell it to you at a discount. Uh, this is an uncommon item. So by the prices, you can get that for 100 GP minus uh, the 10% discount. It will cost you 90 gold pieces. That's not bad. I, is, I, yeah, that is pretty good. Are there different levels of pearls of power? Because no, I've heard that's just one type. No, there is only okay. a single pearl of power. It's like for uh, storing a spell slot, right? Correct, but it's, it's when you return it, it's one level lower than you stored. So if you put in a level two, you would get a level one back. I, no, um, I think that's only if if you. That's uh, only if it's store. fourth level or higher. Yeah. Oh. So one gives you one, two gives you two, three gives you three, four gives you three, five gives you four, six, five, etc., etc. Um, I will thank her profusely, but I I will have to return some other time as I only have fifty gold pieces. I understand. Um, if you need some gold, I have gold that I can give you. That's not an issue. If you give me 50 gold, I can afford both the ship to the isles, and I can afford the pearl as well. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. All Alex, right. Alex is very happy to have had your help with, with the with the ceremony. You help him, he helps you. Money is just, just pieces of metal, as far as he's concerned. He's wearing, you know, black metal. This is, you know, yellow metal. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. With a, a small loan, you are gifted a pearl. It is larger than your average pearl. It's about the size of um, like a like a small like a golf ball, um, and it is uh, something you can wear like on a string around your neck. Uh, it is perfectly smooth, other than where they have drilled in to like attach it to that necklace. Um, and as you store spells in it the cloudy nature of the pearl changes in intensity and color uh depending on the like amount of spell slots you have in it beautiful um, thank you very much well while we're here really quick can you uh or could uh, gron will probably ask uh, what this uh, item identification service uh is oh, well, we will want? identify any item for you is there a cost price, to it course. How much is it? Uh, it will cost you 75 gold pieces to fully identify an item. Hmm. And out of character, Greg, right? Yes. Is this a service we can use like mid-session to identify an item slightly cheaper than spending ourselves? Or could this, like, for example, if we identify Alex's shoulder, right, would that give us any extra information? It would, yeah. It would. Extra information. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I, I will bring this up to the party that like we, we we do have access to the wizards if you have any peculiar items you want to you know identify. Is it like uh, casting the legend lore spell, Greg? Yes. Okay, that might be useful for the crown just to make sure that it actually is the king of rhyme views. I know I made like a lore check saying it was, but then like when I took it to the the current king's family, I, I guess there's like a castle or keep here in rhyme view, Greg. They sort of like mm -hmm. laughed it away, saying "ridiculous." You know, I I think Do we want to like uh, any any more information we can get any auth 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 authentic making sure it's legitness that we can get <laughs> into it is good. I could not say that word. It might even reveal like any like major events, you know, like related to this if it is legend lore spell. Which could yeah. tell like how the king died if this is the king's crown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, I mean, I'm willing to pay some of the money. I can put up like 25 of the gold. Yeah. What's the cost? Is 75? 75 yeah. total. Yeah. Norbert is spent. 
Norbert is spent. Uh, uh, if you put in 25 out of 75, I can give you the 50. That's fine. All right. I appreciate it. And honestly, this helps Alex because his coins are weighing him down so much that spending <laughs> money actually makes him lighter. It's amazing. <laughs> He's being crushed to death by his coins. My friend, you know I could always carry a coin for you, right? <laughs> No. All right, uh, you take the crown. You still have the crown, I believe, right? Yes, they mm-hmm. take it from you. Uh, you hand this battered old crown uh, in the kind of work of the of the Mathwin uh, families, uh, the, the crown of Rhymeview, to the uh, circle of mages deeper into the tower uh, that uh, knows that Rose Nix uh, leads you to. Uh, they perform uh, a small ceremony themselves, uh, a bunch of incanting, uh, long, large gestures with their hands, um, speaking in a language of magic, uh, until eventually one of them speaks, uh, and they speak in a like, deep voice that is not their own, and they tell you the following... This crown was wrought in shadow, a copy of a copy, the crown to control. This is a item of power that gives control of the masses of the dead. It was meant to find information, but that information was not available. It is now merely an agent of chaos. What is oh, wow. Gron's reaction? What is Gron's reaction after hearing that? Yeah, a crown to lead the uh, army of the immediately uh, perking up and uh, very. Int- I mean, the the reason he asked for the item identification service was uh, as as you automatically uh, yourselves uh, thought as well uh, about the crown and um, yeah he he had uh, the the feeling that it was something like that uh, when when. Uh, Mortimer told him that the the skeleton was that was wearing the crown was actually vocalizing uh, things. Um, yeah, he he thought it might have uh, have to do with the crown itself. It was some kind of channeling item to control the the undead. Yeah. Does it have any magical effects, or is it non magical at the time? The crown the time? mechanically um, has no benefit to the party. Uh, other than um, as, you know, a key to the story. Um, But when placed upon the original skeleton, uh, it would animate it and give it the power to animate further skeletons. Okay, so that, the crown itself is what was, was like raising up the skeleton menace in the area, right? It was a y- yes in part. In par- okay, so there there would have Someone had to been made some this sort of crown intentionally. It's not the actual King of Rhymeview's crown. Um, it is a copy of the King of Rhymeview's crown. Interesting. Okay, well, I think yeah. that this tells us definitely that meeting in the Siren Isles is our top priority. Then. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but right. the, the only question I have is like another like double-edged sword, right? We probably don't want to put it on the skeleton's head unless you're looking to be like a grand, a full-on necromancer with necromantic ties, right? Well, the skeleton that it, it would have activated, we already defeated. Yeah. Oh, you've so, already defeated it? Oh, well, that's probably. how I got the crown, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm getting lost in the sessions. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what would happen if you really put it on. Uh, in, right. in like, the 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 th- theory of the magic you know that that's he's a researcher especially in necromantic magic so yeah he he likes understanding how this spell works and um yeah how the item works so this is really good for him but yeah i agree with Mort. uh we should definitely or was it uh, alex uh we should definitely go to the aisle and check out this meeting it might give us more information about who this person was that was using the crown and this skeleton it animated and, you know, what it's planning. 
Yeah. I, I think so. And then, hey, if we if we have time, we can still explore the Mathwin Sepulchre if there really yeah. have been undead disturbances there. Maybe yeah. uh, maybe that's where the necromancer is hanging out. Maybe, yeah. And if the if the crown is a copy, how do we know that the skeleton was the king himself? We don't, but it's yeah, not. So it's going to be interesting to find out what's there. All right. So it sounds like you are done preparing in town, and it is time to travel out. Excellent. So, <clears throat> you are in Rhymeview here on the western coast. It sounds to me like you are traveling to the Siren Isles. Uh, how do you intend to get there, and what is your route? <sighs> well, that's the other tough part of this journey, huh? Um, mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Gentlemen, I think that probably the easiest way, and I say easiest, uh, would be to take like charter a boat to BFM Isle and then try to like I don't know find some idiots who are willing to circle the, <laughs> the Siren Isles. I don't know, or or get a rowboat and row over. Basically, it, uh, as as Greg said, it's it's part of an archipelago, archipelago, archipelago or <laughs> archipelago, an island yeah. chain. And, um, yeah, it, it should be feasible to row over. Can we, can we try and find a madman to whom we can offer a favor in the aisles to get us to the aisles? Sure. How do you go about finding this madman? I mean, Maybe Warwick Davenport uh, needs something delivered, something special delivered there. Warwick Davenport is a, a man of the of the mm -hmm. Merchants Guild. He's an admiral. He does not um, need any crazy favors that he cannot otherwise obtain. I would probably go to one of the wizards that we know from the Arcanium Council. Maybe even Gorgeist to somebody that's like you know kind of lost in the in the mind of their own <laughs> and you go like do you need any components or anything from there you know can you get us to the islands we can get something for you from there or take something you have there you know it's like something something oh, yeah <laughs> of course everyone that you talk to uh would love something from the isles like, oh are you going there yes 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 oh oh could you kill a siren for me i could use a siren's vocal cords actually that would be wonderful for my charm spells oh the research i could do oh it would be wonderful it's like i've heard tale of these giant creatures with large flail like appendages oh i would love to study one do you think you could reduce it for me it's like I think there are herbs there, yes, yes, very interesting ones. And every single person in the council gives you a different, like, odd thing. Um, go ahead and roll me a investigation charisma check as you are going through there to see if any of them actually have connections to get you to the aisles. Do they not have, like, teleportation circles for being very acquainted with the guild? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Not to places that teleportation circles aren't already set up. Dang it. <laughs> Investigation charisma. Yes, please. That would be just my blank charisma roll. Okay. Can I have uh, guidance? <laughs> no, that's so bad. <laughs> oh, your guidance will not save you, even if you had no. it. The, despite the many, many requests you find, um, no one in the Arcanium Council has a madman at their disposal to get you there. Now, would I be able to bribe someone at the Arcanium Council? Because I have a certain telepathic jellyfish that wizards might love to study. They, uh, uh, I mean, they would that. love to study your telepathic jellyfish. Um, they they are all about it, but uh, they don't have a way to get you there. None of the people you talk to have a madman at their disposal. They what about like, like a? They could. Okay, well, that's could, a shame. Grand, that's a shame. Could Grand maybe use his influence in the guild? I mean, he hasn't yet flexed his. Uh, you've Arcanium you've Council. investigated the Arcanium Council. Uh, everyone you talk to is is like thrilled at the prospect. Uh, they would love to get you there, but they don't. They don't have something at their disposal. 
Alex, uh, Alex will will look at his his uh, newly assigned um, assistant, who is way way off in town somewhere, and just motion him to not not come near. This is not it's not the time for you. What what about like a smuggler? Mm-hmm. Would it be possible that they would use the aisles at all? Sure. How do you get in contact with the smugglers? Oh, that not me. <laughs> if any of you have a way. Alex, <laughs> Alex, uh, use your fancy talk. Yeah, yeah, Alex, Alex is a guy that's been placed in Dunstop and said things. Um, uh, he can certainly try to talk to some smugglers. Um, he will approach them, he, he will say to the party, perhaps we approach it from a different avenue. We look for someone going to Shallow Rest or Thorn Rest or a smuggler with some business there, and piggyback off of their business to, to do us. Rather than saying, hey, who wants to go to this crazy murder hole, <clears throat> Siren Isles, <clears throat> field trip, you know. Okay, so you're going to approach the, like, legit sailors and just try to go to BFM Isle? No, the idea is to find someone going to uh, either Thorn Rest or Shallow Rest. Okay. Those are like relatively like normal destinations, but also both like on the coast that we can from there find someone, find a canoe, find something to get us. Well, the yeah, you can just you can just to BFM find Isle. people to. Yeah, let's just go to BFM, BFM Isle. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, BFM Isle is a legit. Okay, yeah. A legit, yeah, you uh, you walk oh, yeah, confidently sorry, up to the you know port. Uh, start asking who's going where. Eventually, you will find a seafaring ship on their way in that direction. Will happily make a stop at BFM Isle's port. Um, it will cost you twenty five gold pieces each uh, for your journey. But okay. uh, one one thing I would like to ask is if, if we could also if that includes the return trip. You know, like uh, if if they drop us off and then pick us back up on the way back or something. I would be happy to do that for an additional twenty five gold pieces. Oh, it it would be an additional twenty. Oh yes, uh, if you'd like to pay up front, we'll we'll make sure that happens. Uh, perhaps, uh, maybe forty up front the whole way, and then if not, almost make it back. You save some money. That's, that doesn't really ring right to me. Go ahead and roll me a persuasion check here as you uh, try to no, sell them that. You know, no, no, Alex wouldn't say that. No, scratch that. <laughs> scratch that. No, no, no. He, he would not say that. That's Okay. No. If you don't want to persuade him, then uh, yeah, he'll, that's, he'll that's dismiss That's not it. something he would say. That's something that is came to me, not to Alex. That's not a... That's okay. Not okay. Sure. Norbert try something silly? Absolutely. What do you want to try, Norbert? Instead of paying 25 gold pieces, he's going to offer his heavy crossbow on a rack of bolts, which is like 51 gold pieces, in exchange for 25 of his uh, cost, cost for him to go to the aisle. Barterers. Everyone's a barterer these days. You know how it's hard twice it is the to amount sell a asking. crossbow? Everybody's selling crossbows. Roll me a persuasion check here to replace your fee. Uh, your DC will be 12. I'm not going to get it, I'm telling you now. Uh, oh, before... I got it. <laughs> <sighs> All right, you know what? Everyone's selling crossbows, but that means people are buying them. Uh, I'll take yours. No one else's yours. Uh, Thank you. He will take all of your bolts and your heavy crossbow in exchange for the uh, 25 gold piece. Beautiful. Uh, sir, uh... Would you be willing to discount, perhaps, if I offer my healing services to your sailors as they work? You know, it can be quite an issue if someone gets wounded. Uh, Does he have any, like, maybe he's got some cuts on him. I'll just, like, lay my hands on him and heal him. I'm a sailor. I always got cuts. Yeah. So I just All right, you heal up the, like, cuts on his arms and hands or whatever from working. Uh, Go ahead and roll me a persuasion check here. All right. Mm-mm-mm. Mind you, I suck at this. <laughs> He's like, ah, neat parlor trick. Now, gonna need your money. All right, well, I tried, and I'll hand over 25 gold. <laughs> okay, perfect. 
All right, you have requisitioned a ship and you are ready to sail across the ocean. Um, uh, does Grand have 25 or do you need coverage, Grand? Yeah, I, I, Grand is very broke. He has 10 gold to his name, so he would need some assistance. Of course, uh, I will take care of that. I have plenty here. Uh, Alex will take care of that and his as well. Mr. Moneybags of the gold. party, all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, as, as some point out, fighters don't spend uh, a mm -hmm. lot of their stuff on stuff, whereas okay. wizards are always buying inks and scrolls and books and stuff. Beautiful. So uh, with that sailed away, you are starting in rhyme view. You're going to be traveling 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That technically touches the island right there. You will be traveling 17 hexes, as straight as I could count, to BFM Isle. Um, sailing goes six hexes a day, so it'll be just about a three-day travel, assuming nothing goes particularly wrong. Um, before we head out, I need to know uh, which role each member of the party will be taking for this journey. Um, Norbert is guide. Norbert will be guiding the party. Okay. Uh, Grand is the scout. Grand will be scouting for the party. I'll be the provisioner. You will be the provisioner. All right. And Alex, that means that you are a lookout. Yes? Okay. Wonderful. So let us start with Mortimer. Um, you are the provisioner. You are responsible for making sure that your party has the... Um, supplies, food, water, anything else you need along the journey. Uh, how will you be providing that for the party on this trip? Uh, so, uh, I think that, that makes sense just to be purchasing rations. Um, how many days did you say it would take by boat? Uh, right. Assuming nothing goes wrong, it is about a three-day journey. All right, so I think we should get maybe like Four days of rations. We can stock back up at BFM right. Isle, presumably, since there's a town there. Mm -hmm. Yep. All sure. right, so, yeah. I'll just be uh, pack riding, I guess. All right. You will be a pack rat. Uh, you will carry on your person the travel rations necessary. Uh, they can be purchased at this point for one GP. Uh, this includes two pounds of hardtack and dried meats, as well as one full water skin. Do you have any pack animals that you're taking with you? I don't think it makes sense to yes. take the pack animals here. Uh, maybe yeah, we when, have one. when we go to the... He's called Norbert. Shut up, Grown. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, uh, Alex, Alex looks back longingly at his mule, gives him a nice pat on the head, and says, I'm sorry, buddy. You're going to have to sit this one out. All right. Uh, so that will be one GP for one set of rations. Uh, each party member will need one for each day on the journey. If you're doing four... Uh, for four days, that'll cost you 16 gold pieces. All right. Each of you pony up four gold, please and thank you. And uh, we will cover that. Okay. Perfect. Uh, you are sailing on a, somebody else's boat. I'm not going to ask you about the encumbrance. You also have a Norbert. Uh, if you need to throw some things on Norbert, you will be not encumbered during this journey. So, uh, after seeing Mortimer stack up all of his supplies into the boat, it kicks off and begins sailing through the isles, making its way across the ocean. As we are doing that, the first day goes fairly uneventfully, um, as the ship itself is expertly making its way through familiar waters, uh, and it is ending its day... <laughs> Um, about, let's see, let's bring in Mortimer's token here. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six hexes. About here as a, a nice, easy, um, sail across the coast. Um, you can, like, kind of watch the trees fall away from you. Uh, the gulls cry on a nice summer day. Um, and let us go as the night comes and goes to, uh, our guide. Uh, no, it's not our guide. We go to our scout first, don't we? Let me look at my... Let me look at my... Uh, yes, the scout. I'm sorry. Let us go to Grand. Um, here, you are the scout of the party. Uh, you're responsible for uh, making sure that you are on the best route 
uh, most of the time, but uh, while you are sailing, you are responsible for making sure that the weather or the movement of monsters or anything else doesn't lose you time or slow you down on the journey. Um, please, uh, describe to me how you are going to avoid getting lost, stuck, broken down, or otherwise sidetracked. Yeah, so, uh, Grand is by now uh, quite the seasoned scout. Uh, he's been doing it almost every, uh, excursion. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, uh, this is actually the first time on a ship. Uh, I mean, he has been on ships, but he, he never had to really scout on the ship. And, um... Yeah, it's a bit different from on land, obviously, uh, where it, it, in, in, in the, on the ship it's a kind of a shared duty with, with the, the captain or navigator of the ship, which is, uh -huh. you know, uh, someone on the ship. And uh, so it, this will be first uh, him assisting this navigator, uh, especially with his owl. Uh, so he will go uh, at a high spot in the ship, like probably in the crow's nest or somewhere, and then uh, put his uh, uh, eyes in the head of the owl and fly up high and use its excellent farsight mm -hmm. and um, basically uh, yeah, uh, lo look around and then uh, look at the weather patterns and use what he knows of, of weather patterns and um, uh, yeah, he, he knows a lot about it. He's, you know, a uh, very versed in, in nature lore, and um, yeah. Okay, excellent. You send your eyes out into your owl, and you look at the weather as best you can, trying to avoid any problems. That sounds to me like some nature intelligence, if I've ever heard it. Uh, go ahead and make that roll for me with advantage for sailing. Uh, your base DC will be 12. Ah, uh, that is a 14. That is a success. You easily are able to pick out storms along the way, fog banks before they become a problem. Relay that information to the captain of the ship. Please mark inspiration for your successful scouting. The party will not get lost, stuck, broken, or otherwise sidetracked during this travel time. Excellent. Uh, the next day begins, and you begin sailing straight across the middle of the ocean waters here, making a straight line for BFM Isle. Um, as you do so, the waves are a little choppier here, the little larger open seas uh, of the, uh, of the uh, what do we call this, a bay, um, are harder to navigate than the ones near the coast. Um, and as the boat kind of chops and bucks around, let us go to our guide, uh, Mr. Norbert himself. Uh, you are responsible for staving off the labors of the journey and ensuring that your party are not um, exhausted or drained by the journey itself. Please describe to me how you avoid or stave off said labors of the journey. There's two things I want to do. I want to do something very funny, but I'm going to have my imp in the dark pits of the ship, like making demonic noises and like, uh, you know, making like illusions and stuff like that, just scaring the <laughs> sailors. And I'm going to spread rumors that like there's an imp, you know, on this ship who eats like sailors that don't work really hard. But at the same time, if possible, I would like to roll my survival wisdom. No, probably I want to, to go for my athletic strength. I'm taking up the labors myself. I'm showing the guys that I really believe those stories and that I'm working extra hard you know, to, to make sure that everything goes smoothly. I uh, so fear. Fear and terrorism. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, will, I will let you roll your athletic strength to, like, show the way. Um, or you can roll a, like... Um, charisma based like intimidation about your your <laughs> imp and the stories of of the uh the the scary thing in the bowels of the ship that eats on uh on unproductive sailors exactly oh your your uh 22 is amazing your base dc was 15 you clear that easy she's showing the sailors how to work a friendly competition emerges uh trying to best the the friendly giant um as the the proud sailors do the best they can but uh are unable to match your own prowess 
Uh, this does make the journey uh, very easy on your companions as the NPCs of the sailing ship um, are going above and beyond their own duty. Please mark inspiration for your successful guidance. Uh, no one will become exhausted or otherwise drained on this journey. The second day of the journey eventually becomes a little bit easier for you and the party as the, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, as the ships clears some of the choppier waters, it gets closer to the Shimmer Isles, uh, and it begins to kind of coast through the waters in night. Um, in the evening, I want to talk about our lookout, Alex. Um, you are responsible for spotting any dangers uh, that may be approaching, anything that might take your party unawares, and any cool discoveries out in the water. Um, as uh, we zoom in on you, please describe your efforts to keep lookout for the party on this trip. Um, so if, uh, if this is the uh, evening, as you said, I believe, um, Alex actually has a um, hooded lantern. Mm -hmm. that he will use to uh, light up from some uh, available oil. Presumably somewhere on the ship they have uh, some candle oil or some, some lubricant or something. Um, and he will kind of use that to uh, shine along um, in front of them and like on the shore to try and spot anything coming up out of the water, anything lurking in the shadows that wouldn't expect a sudden bright light to be there, like a spotlight, you know? Okay. Okay, you're keeping a sharp eye out, using your lantern as best you can uh, to keep a nice eye out in the darkness. But go ahead and roll me a perception wisdom check. You will have advantage for sailing. Uh, your base DC as the lookout, uh, I believe, is going to be 12 as well. Yes. Um, all right. Ooh, that is an eight. Okay. Uh, on a failure, uh, you will either be surprised or you will be um, be able to take wounds to avoid surprise. Um, tell me, uh, when the party happens upon um, a derelict ship in the night, um, how do you... How do you want this to play out? Would you like your party to potentially be surprised by anything they find within? Or will you take wounds to avoid this? Um, I think I think with the level of alertness of the men on the ship and all the hustle and the bustle and the work going on, mm -hmm. um, there's really no way that we'd be surprised by anything. I think the most likely thing is that Alex would try to call out that he'd say something's up ahead. And just kind of like trip and kind of like gnarl his foot. You a little will bit take in the moons instead. All right, excellent. Um, much to your surprise, uh, you do not notice the derelict ship, nor does anyone else in the dead of the night. Uh, and there is a grinding of wood on wood as you go into this ship. Uh, and as you do, uh, Alex, you are tossed from the ship itself into the derelict ship. You go slamming into the old wood, uh, and you find yourself uh, looking around inside of this old thing. Um, as you are thrown, please mark for me one wound. Uh, will you take uh, the average of the die, or will you roll it for the HP you were marking off? Uh, I will take the average of my D8, okay. so I'll cut that okay. down by five. All right, excellent. Uh, please reduce your maximum HP by four. Not five? Uh, isn't, half of four. Your, isn't the average of a D8 four? Oh, it's four and a half. We'll round, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll round that to four, because that's how we round damage. Works for me. All right. Excellent. As you look around, uh, Alex, you find yourself on a strange looking ship. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of our non Alex tokens here. 
There is an old derelict freighter that you have been tossed into the second floor of, having crashed down into it. Around you, there are old barrels and open doors and windows to different rooms. You lie here, wounded and bleeding on the woodwork. What do you do? Hmm. Okay. Um, so I think the first thing uh, Alex would do uh, is he would... Uh... Let me make sure this is okay, Greg. Uh, I can use this all on myself, correct? It's a, a friendly creature that can see or hear me. Doesn't say another friendly creature. What are you trying to use? Uh, rally. I, I put it in the uh, thing. Roll 20. I don't see a rally in roll 20. Did it not pop up? Oh, you GM rolled it. I see. Uh, no, no, no. It popped up for the rest of us. Did it? Yeah. I see uh, I'll I'll put in again. You see that? Uh, on your turn, you can use the bonus action to expend one superiority die to bolster the resolve of one of your companions. When you do so, choose a friendly creature who can see or hear you. That creature gains temporary hit points equal to the superiority mm -hmm. die roll plus your charisma modifier. Uh, yes, you may use rally on yourself. I suppose you you yes, psych yes. yourself up. With your own like words, tell me how do you how do you psych yourself up here as you lie on the the broken wood here, bleeding on this this derelict ship? Uh, so Alex Alex hits the hits the deck, and as he as he gets up, uh, his 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 first thought uh, besides um, you know, ow my leg, uh, is one that they've just discovered a derelict ship. Um, this could be all sorts of uh, interesting or useful for them. Perhaps it'll help them in uh, whatever in, in finding what's going on here with you know with with everything. Perhaps somebody recently sunk the ship. Um, is there a clue as to how derelict it is? Is there rot on the wood? Is it very obvious, or do I have to make a check for that? The wood itself does not seem to be rotten. In fact, it seems in very good repair, despite. Um, being floating around here with no sign of crew at all in the dark of this night. Okay. Uh, in that case, yeah, after uh, Alex will sort of um, realize that this could be something useful, and yeah, they've hit it and it's kind of messed up their journey a little bit, but there could be some good to come of it. Um, and, there, and then the little voice comes in his head, the sound of Mortimer, treasure map, treasure map, treasure map. He thinks, oh, you know, maybe. So he will call back to Mortimer uh, and Norbert and Grand on the ship. Man overboard! <laughs> As that's the simplest way to describe what just happened. All right. You psych yourself up with thoughts of, of potential treasure and the excitement of this new ship. You gain some temporary hit points in your excitement and you call, Man overboard! Uh, you see NPCs rush up to you, sailors from the ship, like like looking down uh, from the uh, from the like deck of their own ship, like through the top floor that you've crashed through into like your area here. Torches get kind of pulled out to like see better. Flashes of uh, torch light kind of illuminate where you are. Uh, party, uh, what do you do when you see this derelict ship empty with uh, Alex bleeding out on it? Well, I go to help Alex, of course. <laughs> okay. Norbert is first of all looking not inside the ship, but around the ship. He has been on a boat before. Mm -hmm. He knows if the ship is not sunk, there's something around the ship rather than inside it. Give me a perception check as you observe the exterior of the ship. Can I ask for guidance from my god? Absolutely, please do. So that's like that. And a d4. Yeah, that's horrible. You don't see <laughs> anything in the exterior of the ship. Uh, the choppy kind of waves are back here in the night as the storm picks up. Uh, you, you don't notice anything. I'll toss a rope to Alex. Um, Alex will grab it carefully and try his best to lift himself up, but having one arm as a sword makes it hard to climb a rope. 
So he just has to rely on Norbert for most of the pulling strength. I reckon Norbert just picks you up with one hand, like, you know, through the rope. Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, and Mortimer then, will, like, uh, yeah. well, I was going to suggest that we, we go down and check it out. Maybe the crew can lend us a couple ropes to help us be safer in case something collapses down there. Question, Greg. Could I, like... Is it like I assume like the captain is around, right? Like this would have even if he was sleeping, this would have yeah, like yeah, jolted yeah, him yeah, away. Sure, you can find the captain. So I would like, uh, sir, um, do you have any indication whose ship this might be? You're a man of the sea. He looks it over. He says, "You know that's strange. I don't see any markings on it. Must maybe uh, if I were a betting man, I would say from the uh." uh from the Isles to the south of us. Uh, they aren't uh, around any guilds. Uh, there's Shimmer Harbor folks. The off the grid. Maybe this is their boat. Uh. Would, would you, uh, Grand overhears this and ask, would you say it's a smuggling ship or, or maybe a That was my ship? thought. I didn't want to accuse anyone untowardly, though I don't see anyone down there. Very odd. Wonder how a ship came to be floating this far out with no one aboard. I've heard stories of g- g- ghost ships. I I've heard <laughs> stories of ghost ships too. Lesser captains would be scared of them. Do you see any ghosts down there? I don't. I could I actually sorry summon my imp and actually go investigate. L- let him investigate there while invisible. Oh, I was hoping you would say I saw my imp and say, "Oh, there's a ghost." <laughs> <laughs> you want to summon your imp absolutely you order it to go invisible and it begins padding around the steps of the ship uh the imp itself uh can wander about um looking for what exactly just any disturbances at all what are your what are you ordering it to look for well, first of all, of anything living or of any like signs of what happened to the people, and the second thing being like, just open up the chests or barrels you see, see if you know it's a smuggling ship, if there's any you know mm. money in there or something along those lines. Okay, uh, he begins to he turns invisible and begins to pad around the ship. Uh, you lose sight of him quickly as he dips around into the the ship itself. Um, your Imp needs a stat block. Mm-mm-mm. Let me see. Imp. Six Imp. strength, 17 dex, 13 con, 11 int, 12 ways, 14 charisma. As, uh, as the As the imp walks around, Alex will take a look at Mortimer. Give him like a raised eyebrow. Mm. Words, and words unspoken. Your imp flies around as odd looks are exchanged. Uh, go ahead and roll me a d20 plus one. A 12. 12. Unfortunately for you, after about five or ten minutes, your connection with your imp disappears. And you Uh-oh. no longer can feel it. Is this a magical effect? Because if so, I would have advantage on the save. This is not a magical effect. I'm jumping into the ship. All right. You Um, jump into the ship down nearby uh, where Alex fell. Uh, You find yourself uh, on the kind of second floor here. Uh, there are st- there are stairs leading up to the deck where there you can see from the top there's nothing there. Um, and there are these barrels. Uh, where is Norbert's token? There we are. Question, um, Greg? Yes. So, since there was like around 10 minutes, you said, could I have like ritually cast uh, Detect Evil and Good? I am sure that you could, yes. Actually, wait a second. That isn't a ritual spell, I don't think. Um, in that case, it would have been like detect magic. Okay. Um, there is definitely magic on this ship. Um, it's it's getting blocked a little bit by wood um, or something. Uh, but down in the the back half of the ship here, 
Um, you sense some magic. Uh, the aura is is too distorted for you to make out its exact school or what it is from like up where you are. Hmm. I'll I'll call down to them. There's something magical and dangerous down there. Yes, it's me. No, no, besides <laughs> you. Um, as I jump onto the ship and I remember I can actually try and look through my imp's eyes and like how he feels. Can I do that? Or You've is he gone, lost gone? your connection with the, um, s- the summoned imp. You try to throw your eyes through it, um, but you cannot, you cannot see or hear anything. I feel like Norbert is gonna yell out, Zor! Norbert's coming! And he's just gonna try and go in the direction where, where I feel like he went. You would have known that Norbert went this direction uh, towards the door here. Yeah. Are you guys how, coming? Yeah, Greg, how um, stable does the ship look? Is it like, uh, is there a large leak in it? Or Surprisingly is it well built. The, the wood doesn't look particularly overly aged, nor does the wood seem particularly um, uh, like broken or like we have large gashes in it you crash through the top um of the like deck down here um but the the like floor that you're on seems to hold relatively well uh there's there's little give to the wood um there doesn't seem to be any signs of it being um rotting or anything like that okay so it looks more of like a abandoned ship than a wrecked ship yeah no it doesn't look like a wrecked ship at all Okay, so you said derelict. Uh, sometimes that can mean different things. I want to derelict see how, usually how means derelict abandoned, works. I believe. It there's it, it could mean a lot of things. Like yeah, derelict of duty, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, derelict uh, in very poor condition. Hmm. Well, yeah. maybe maybe I mean more of an abandoned ship. Abandoned, yeah. That's good. I think. Okay. I think Mortimer is going to call down to the two uh, tough guys and call and say to them, "Whatever is down there that probably attacked your minion, try to lure it out here, and we'll blast it." And he'll like start preparing spells. Okay, um, Alex will throw his old token overboard and watch it drown in the water, as oh. his new token happily takes its place. Oh, hey, look at that! <laughs> nice. Is it attached to your sheep? Yeah, it is. You should be able to zoom in or get like a big view, probably. So hey, I there like we the, go. The, okay, perfect. The ship that we're sailing on is like over here next. Yeah, to yeah, it, so yeah. Your ship would be I'll over just here. Put my token there for that. For okay, the sake of sure. That. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Um, Norbert, as you make your way down into this uh, area here, you're going towards this door. You get to the square that you are in. Uh, make me a active percep- perception wisdom check as you are um, uh, like investigating. You're on high alert in this moment. Alex will stay near him, obviously, but not. He's not. Afraid. Norbert, there's something wrong with these chests right here. The the crates. They, they don't look right, and as you get near them, they open their eyes and their mouths, and they go to bite at you. No. Roll me initiative. You are not surprised. Oh, not surprised at all. <laughs> not surprised in the slightest, no. Uh, let me get my monsters here. Where did, my, where did I put my monsters? Mm-mm-mm-mm. The only one surprise is Mortimer. All Shush. right. Let us again. Probably, probably because Norbert's so big, he's blocking his view of the of the chest. Didn't even see it. All right, Norbert, you react as you see this crate open its eyes, its mouth. Okay. Ah, what do you do? A very interesting question. Yeah. I think for the time being, Norbert is just going to bonk it on the head. Okay. 18. An 18. That'll hit. Go ahead and roll me some damage. Sorry, it's just an 8. That is just an 8. 8 points of damage for this mimic. Very good. Um, That's it? You're just bonking it on the head? I will cast a spell on myself. 
Okay. Being the the typical uh, shield of faith. Shield of faith. Very good. With that, the crate goes. It's opened its eyes, its mouth, its tongue lunges out like a pseudopod attempting to snatch at you. Um, it attacks with a nine, unable to hit you. Um, and that is all of its attacks this round. Alex, what will you do? Um, Alex, uh, is, uh, a little bit confused when he sees Norbert flailing against something, and then he sees behind this massive statue of a man, this crate attacking him. Yeah. So he will come around with his, uh, massive sword, and will try and give it an old slashy slash. Mm -hmm. Titan Slayer gone right there. Uh, sneak attack is active. Nothing else is here. We shall. Um, since I have a wound, is that a condition, Greg? I think we established before that it was. Yes, a wound will count as a condition. Yeah. Absolutely. It will activate your pendant to pendant. Yep. The uh, pendant, the red pendant that's in, in now embedded almost into his armor glows red as he goes in with a swing. Ooh, 13? the 13 is going to hit. Yes. For 11 Fantastic. more points of damage, you slash at the crate, and instead of splinters of wood, you get a wet, slick thud as uh, a little bit of the, the like, mimic's blood splashes on the ground around you. That is unpleasant. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, I think... I'm pondering whether to action search now to save it until whatever happens down here later in the boats. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we just hold off for a moment. Okay. Um, I don't think I have any bonus actions. I apologize. Let me double check. Uh, I do, actually. I have uh, Rally. I will use a bonus action and one of my maneuvers here to uh, Rally Norbert and uh, encourage him to uh, fight off this... Uh, all right. Box that's attacking him. You rally I, Norbert I with your it. words, giving him five temporary hit points. Gron, uh, you see thing? these um, burly men attacking a ship crate as it tries to eat them <laughs> from the top of the ship. What do you do? Yeah, so Gron is looking into the ship and, and seeing uh, uh, Norbert smack a, a, a mimic, what it seems, or a, a living chest, and... Uh, yeah, he he will first send his owl in to to distract the the chest and uh, get get vengeance for his fellow familiar, <laughs> and uh, then we'll follow it up with uh, a toll the bet uh, the dead where he, he points at this, this chest and then an dolorous bell starts ringing next to it and mm -hmm. uh, necrotic energy starts attacking it. All right, go. Oh, I guess I need to make you a nice little save here. The chest is unaffected by the dolorous sound of your necrotic bell. It rings out across the ship and the ocean in the dead of night. But the chest continues slabbering and biting at the great wall of Norbert. All right. Um, Grand's turn is over. Mortimer! Alright, so... Hmm. Okay, what I think I'm going to do to start off is... I am going to bless... Um... Let's see here. I'll say, uh... Myself... Uh... Alex and Norbert. Okay. Yes. And uh, that'll be my turn. Norbert for the will moment. be blessed. Yes. You say that's the end of your turn? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Norbert, you feel the blessings of a divine power upon you. The, like, rallying cries of your friend behind you. What do you do? Norbert is going to yell to the ship. It's like, and yell out, Mimics on the ship! 
Sailors, shoot every box, shoot every barrel. And you're just going to continue <laughs> heading into the deeper into the to look for his aim. All right. As you move past the mimic, it will take a bite at you in reaction. Ooh, with a 23, will that hit you? Uh, nope. <laughs> Damn. What? All right. <laughs> You move past into the ship. You see a. You move past the door and you see into the room here. Uh, there is a like small, almost like fire pit um, that uh, exists here, where like things might be cooked upon. A table and chairs, um, as well as another door. This one open, uh, where you can see uh, the room of chests. Um, what would have been the cargo room of the old sailing ship. <laughs> okay. All right, there's a million of chests in there, right? Like a bunch of chests. Um, yeah, there's like four main ones, but yeah, there would be more stuff in there probably. Do any of them seem misplaced? Like they did just took a bite out of like a furial creature? Mm. Like a familiar perhaps? Uh, give me a perception check. Maybe one of them still licking its lips, you know? It would have disappeared. It wouldn't have, like, died or been eaten. Perception, you said, right? Yep. Pretty bad. Yeah, despite your, despite your best efforts as you look around... Everything seems mundane and normal to you in here. I will channel my arcane power as I pull out this like purple hue stone from my hands, and I will summon a dark elemental into the room to wreak havoc on these bloody chests. Ooh, very nice. nice. All right. You find yourself summoning a powerful dark elemental. The uh, stats for which are in the handout, the Dark Elemental yep. Stone here, uh, that you can see. Yeah, okay, perfect. So All can right. I choose one of the targets and just do two attacks and then the Terrifying Glare, or is it on the next turn? Uh, you summon it. it, it will move on your initiative. Uh, what do you want it to do? Just uh, pick out the first chest and give it a good old smack on the head for a 26. All right, it rushes over here and cannot... attacks the chest. That's a 26, that'll hit. For 2d8 plus 5 damage, flashing damage, for 14 damage. For 14 Ooh. damage, the chest opens up and its teeth and eyes stare out and it goes, Aah! Another slap for a 27. That'll hit. <laughs> for another 13 damage. All right, uh, that chest is feeling a little beat up. Uh... And if the chest can see the, uh, sorry, the elemental, it must make a 13, DC 13 wisdom saving throw or take 2d8 psychic damage or pass on uh, save. Uh, that is a 12. failed save <laughs> by the chest. It takes 12 more points of damage. It takes 12 more points of psychic damage. Excellent. And this and this chest is unable to move or do anything else until it repeats a save on, at the end of his next turn. Okay, perfect. He is stunned. Boom. All right, wonderful. With that, the mimics go. Um, Norbert, the table and chairs begin to move towards you. <sighs> and the table and chairs will attempt to eat you with a large <laughs> bite. Well, 19, that's not going to do it. No. The box here is going to come into the room, and it's going to try to eat you. Um. 21's not going to do it. Alex, the box next to the other mimic is moving towards you. It's going to try to eat you. Okay. It will critically oh hit you, Oh, my God. Yes. Alex, please take for me um, 18 points 25. of... 25. No, uh, 14 points of piercing damage and 11 points of acid damage as the mimic oh. chomps down on you. 
So let's do this. Let, let, let's parry uh, and not die. Take okay. a little bit less damage. Uh, we're going to... Our mouse is not going to be cooperating here. Sorry. Give me just a second. Don't forget you rallied yourself as well for seven hit points before. Yes. So, uh, reaction reduced damage by D8 plus dex. Okay. Uh, what's my dex at? Two, I believe. I believe you just rolled it there. Did you not just yeah, roll you it? Yeah, um, Did I? Yeah, right above the battle. You can take the four instead. Oh, I, I didn't actually type that out. How oh, very generous of you, Greg. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, I'm confused. I don't know where that came from, but I'll take it. Sure, okay. All right. Uh, so I will parry seven of that of the physical damage. I'm going to take all of the acid. Okay. Uh, and I will yell out in pain as this thing bites the shit out of me. All right. Um, so let's see. It's 20 minus seven is 13. Uh, plus 11 is 24. It puts me at two hit points. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, is there a con save for that acid, or is it automatic? That is automatic as it digs its teeth into you. It is just part of its bite. You'll see that the saliva of the of the mimic like drips onto your skin, and it burns. That is a bad time. Okay. Uh, mimics suck. Brond, where's your <laughs> owl? Yep. Um, can, can I pull the token over? You should be able to, yeah. That makes me very glad I didn't react with an opportunity attack when the first box attacked. Otherwise, I'd be dead. But then I'd be exploding, which is good. So who knows? We'll see. Your owl is up by you? Yeah. Mm, okay. Um, This one here is going to move over, and it will fire a pseudopod. At good old Norbert. With a nine, its sticky tongue-like tendril tries to wrap you and ensnare you, but it fails. These ones begin to shift forward. Alex, oh, oh, fuck. it's your turn. What will you do? Oh, I apologize. These moved up here? Yes. Oof, okay. Disengage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I might have to. Uh, the other option is drinking a potion and restoring like most of these hit points. We well, we have a life cleric. You're gonna be yeah. full HP next round. Any, uh, this yeah, round, not anyways, only probably. Is he a, a, a cleric of life. He also has a a, a very powerful item that uh, wand that actually. Yeah. No. So let's do this uh, as a bonus action. I'm gonna second wind. Okay. Plus three for six hit points. Go to eight. I don't know why I see that. Clicked off of that for some reason. Oh, the D8 was for me, was for me apparently accidentally rolling a random hit dice from like mouse spasming on the screen. I was like, I don't know where that came from. Sorry. Sorry. I apologize. Um, and then I will. Um, You're staring ah. down two mimics, man. Yeah. Um, this over here, is this walkable area? Uh, is like this, yeah, so this is a, a door, this is a door, this is a door, all leading to separate places. Okay. Greg, um, can I ask you a question? Sorry to bother you. Yeah. No, go ahead. So my imp has immunity to poison damage, right? Yeah. And he has quite a few of hit points. Did he... St Die to the mimics, or is that unknown at the moment? I don't think you know at the moment. Okay. Sorry. No worries. Okay. Yeah, but um, that, that would would have been poison, and and these do acid, right? That is true. Acid is different than poison. All right. So is it? Uh, Alex yeah, still has okay. to tell me what he's doing other than second. Yeah, I, I apologize. He was puzzling whether or not to, to disengage, but considering uh, it will just put uh, Norbert swarmed by mimics, 
uh, it's, it's not the way that he's gonna it's gonna be. So he will try to do his best to attack the one in front of him. Okay, please do. Um, you have reach, so uh, I can kill the yeah, wounded one. I was going to say, I can attack this one here, because that's been uh, damaged previously, It has right? been, yes. This this one is not bloodied, but it has been damaged. Perfect. I have 10-foot reach with my Titan Slayer. I have sneak attack from Norbert help me out, and I will go ahead and make that roll. Okay. I think he also has advantage. Well, he has advantage anyway. Yeah. Uh, from what? You'll have advantage from the owl um, who has distracted this mimic and flown back to Grand. Okay, Uh, well, let's see if it crits. It does not crit. Uh, But I will take the first damage. Uh, For 22 points of damage, you slice into the, like, wet, like, thick hide of this crate, uh, and you bloody it with your oversized Naginata. All right. Ron. Um, nope. Uh, I I apologize. Um, I think now is a decent time for an action surge, and I will take Seems a second reasonable. attack. Okay, sounds good. Um, at that same one. Okay. Uh, no sneak attack. It's once per turn, but we shall swing a day. Don't forget um, that you're blessed, by the way. Oh, thank you. That is an 8. Go ahead and roll me that d4 for an 11. That will unfortunately miss. Despite your your previous success, you slash at this wooden crate, uh, but its slick, slimy hide kind of like deflects your blade off of it without causing too much damage. All right, and that is that. And he will uh, look back at the ship, and he will shout to the sailors, Shoot everything that's not us, even if it's not moving yet. Shoot it just in case. <laughs> All right. Grand, you're watching from above, seeing this desperate fight with the crates below you. What do you do? Yeah, so Grand uh, is surprised that there are that many, these crates, and, and he, he's puzzled as to why there would be a ship with that many mimic crates. But, um, yeah, he, he has to change his threat assessment. So uh, he will cast... A uh, flaming sphere, and no, a no. floating flaming sphere will appear in front of oh. these three. Okay. Goodbye, ship. Yeah, uh, it's floating, so it should be fine. I hope. We'll see. <laughs> floating. Yeah, it's surrounded by water. What could go wrong? <laughs> uh, I'm I'm still looking. Where's this? This um. Open. Oh, here it is. You put it right here? No, I, I was I was thinking about right. these three here that are... Oh, yeah. That's you good. You create a flaming sphere. Very good. And uh, I will ram it into the middle one. So All right. Give me a dexterity save, please. Absolutely. Let us get a dexterity save from the mimic. Uh, that is a 16. It'll take half damage. It will take one point of damage. And, uh, yeah, that is my action. Okay. Um, my owl will... Uh, can you remind me again what the chests did? This one, did this one attack? Uh, already? This one bit, um, Alex. This one pseudopodded at Norbert. This one tried to bite Norbert. This one you can't see. Alright. Um I think it will distract uh this one. The one that is injured already. Okay. Sounds good. And then it will fly back. I mean it has 60 feet of movement, so one, two, three. Distract and fly back. Uh, oh, okay, sounds good. Mortimer, you see this going on from above you. What do you do? All right, so I am you. first. Yeah, I'm gonna call the captain. So you know that that crossbow that Alex gave you, you should probably pull it out now. Mm-hmm. And um, 
I am going to uh, spiritual weapon. It is not concentration, so bonus action is going to be spiritual weapon, which I'm going to crit something, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I'll uh, let let's do um this one right here, the one that Alex is fighting. Oh, well, I guess there are several. Oh, sorry. Uh, there, that you one. You place your spiritual weapon in the square next to it. It takes a mighty swing at the um, at the uh, crate, dealing 12 points of damage to it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And um, for my action, I am going to... Okay, I'm going to do my Preserve Life uh, version of Channel Divinity. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, dang. Uh, before, Actually, wait, is Alex already above half health? Uh, Alex is basically at half. Yeah, this thing is not going to work right now. Okay, yeah, ne never mind then. Um, it's it's like one of the most misread spells in the game because everyone misses that half hit point clause. Most yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is... Uh, I suppose now is a decent time to drink the potion of improved fire breath okay. that I have. Oh, nice. Light these. Light and them. I am going to, like... <clears throat> can I, like, get on the railing and, like, lean over and just, like, breathe fire down on, on uh, these three? So it'd be like, bye. So like to the there, essentially. Um It's a cone, twenty feet. Yeah, but you're not flat with them. You're like breathing down at an angle, right? Because you're not on the ship. And they're on the second floor of this ship. I don't think you can hit them with a twenty foot cone. You'd have to get uh, down into the like second floor where they are. Okay. Well I I'll I'll, uh, I'll save that for if they try to climb up here, I guess. Okay. Um yeah, just in that case, yeah. <laughs> just can trip. <laughs> well, no, I, I his drank potion the potion with my action. Oh, potion. yeah. Sorry. All right. Uh, I think that's the end of your turn. Yeah. That is the end of my turn. Uh, excellent. Norbert, it is uh, your turn. I, what I, would I you do? Do the sailors do anything? No, they're watching with horror. Some of them are trying to pull the anchor up out of their like boat and like get it away or get ready to get away. Uh, I, I bitches. Mortimer, I'm sorry. you didn't take an action. You just used spiritual weapon. Do you have like a cancer? You drank a potion. Is it... Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't hear the potion drinking. I apologize. You yeah, drank yeah. it but didn't use it. I thought it was a one time drink and use it once. Okay. No, within one minute of drinking it, you can use it. Got it. Yeah. Norbert is upset. He gave somebody a crossbow and he's not even using it. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. money, uh, man. Right. He's got to sell it. So I'm going to be attacking this chest now with my. Uh, Elemental, if you can see. Okay. The one that uh, yeah. was bloodied before by Alex? No. So my elemental, oh, your elemental is going to be attacking. going to be attacking. I understand. Yes. Yes. Sounds good. This mimic there, uh, down there, that's not paralyzed or frightened or whatever you want to call it. Okay. For a 10 to hit, that I'm guessing is a miss. That will no. For an uh, 18? 18 will. For 2d8 plus, sorry, 5 damage, being 17 damage. This chest explodes, um, gold and items breaking and flying everywhere. Uh, it deletes. Uh, my elemental is going to move back into the room where I am. Okay. Four. Um, can it use this paralyzing gaze on the table? Uh, it can indeed. Give me a wisdom saving throw. As a 15. 15 is good enough. However, you are going to take half of whatever I'm going to about to roll. All right. Which Sounds is good. five psychic damage. Five psychic damage for the table. Brilliant. With that, the mimics will go... Uh, Sorry, I didn't act. Oh, okay. Nope, you go. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, Nor what Norbert is going to do is what he does best, and he's going to bonk the bloodied mimic. 
All right, please do. Sorry. At advantage. You remember? At advantage, correct. That is 15? a 15 plus bless. That hits. For 13 points of damage. 13 points of damage. Brilliant. Uh, that is uh, 33, 43, 46, 54. That will kill this mimic here. It goes and bleh! I would, I would like to stand in this door frame so no more mimics or anybody else can get out from this room. Okay, sounds good. And now the mimics will go. Uh, this mimic here is going to shoot its pseudopod at you, Mr. Norbert. The table is going to fire its pseudopod. Uh, that is a critical hit. He grabs you. Uh, that is 13 bludgeoning damage. Uh, you are now stuck with sticky tack. Um, you are adhered to the Mimic and grappled by it. This is Escape DC 13 on your turn, if you would like to get out of it. Um, while you are grappled in this way, the Mimics will have advantage on attack rolls against you. In which case, these two creatures turn, and they will try to bite you. Uh, with an 18, that is not going to get it done. And the second with a 23? Oh, Greg, no. Oh my god, your AC is insane! Alright, they fail to bite you. Uh, this mimic here is going to move forward. This mimic here is going to move forward. This mimic here is going to move across. Uh, they are all adjacent to your uh, sphere. Go ahead and roll me damage. Yep, uh, give me three uh, dexterity saves. Just roll me damage. They all will take six points of damage. Brilliant. Um, with that, uh, this chest begins to move. The bed begins to move. This bed is going to move. This table begins to move. These chests will move. Um, and the floor begins to feel oddly tacky around you. Yes, I knew it! Sticky and like sucking at your feet and like trying to hold you down. Alex, wow. it's your turn. What will you do? Um, Alex, Alex, uh, will, will yell out to the others. Um, and I'm not gonna yell. It's gonna fuck the mic. But um, he he will yell that, that these creatures are slow and that we should be able to easily outmaneuver them if we think uh, carefully and strategically. Mm -hmm. Um. So he will let's see. Um. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna make a wisdom save while you think. Yeah. Um. Still stuck. I kind of want to disengage and move over here because that'll give me a round with my 10 foot reach to start swinging on them uh, until until something else happens. Uh, Norbert's got high AC. Um, I think that seems like a pretty good play. Um, so let's do that. Let's uh let's disengage. And then we are going to move to uh yeah, not the edge of the ship. Um I, I don't like the idea. Let's move to here. And then comes in, they can still without too many issues. Um, yeah, I don't know. That feels, that feels weird. Um, sorry, sorry, I'm taking so long. It's, uh, I think that's all of your movement. 
5, 10, 15. I think you've moved 20. I think you have to go here. You are now walking in difficult mm -hmm. terrain. Oh, oh, the whole ship is difficult terrain? Yes, I, the uh, wood has become okay. spongy and sticky and tacky. It sucks at your feet and is difficult terrain. I don't. I thought I said I, it was difficult terrain. I Maybe I missed that in my um, uh, explanation. Yeah, it's 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 entirely possible that would just be missing. That's that's my bad. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do that. Um, I guess that's it. Um, okay. I don't don't like how that turned out, but I did what I did, so that's what it is. <laughs> okay, Grand, it is your turn. What yeah, do you the do? Was, that felt entirely pointless. Uh, Alright, so on. my turn, um, yeah, I will, I will bonk uh, with my, um, ball, um, yeah, this one, okay. and uh, I will also uh, cast uh, Toll the Dead on it, um, yeah, so give me a Wisdom and a Dexterity save. I will fail the wisdom save, succeed the dexterity save. Roll me damage for the sphere and for your uh, cantrip. All right, we'll take eight points of damage and three. Perfect. What does the owl do? Um, the owl will distract uh, this one and fly back. Okay. As it crosses the ship's boundary, it gets down close enough to this, like, wall or to the floor as it distracts. Uh, the ship was prepared for this, and a pseudopod comes <laughs> flying out of the floorboards towards your owl. Uh, and it will attack it. Uh, with an 11, does that hit owl AC? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, I believe so. It, either it has 11, where do I see this? Uh, either it has 11 or 12, I'm not sure. It's 11 AC, exactly. Your owl has 11, 11 AC, exactly. All right, excellent. Uh, oh, then. We will get rid of Evan. that. Uh, your owl is struck by the pseudopod, and it dies. In a cloud of feathers, it disappears back into the ether from which it was summoned. Good thing I bought some, literally this in preparation for this session I bought some uh, extra um, components. <laughs> That's good, Mortimer. It is your turn. What will you do? Oh boy. Um. Okay. Let's see. I suppose first things first. Bonus action. Uh, spiritual weapon. So this chest is still uh, alive. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, then I guess I will uh, spiritual weapon. I think I got that here. All right. Oh, uh, yeah, spiritual weapon swings like, wait, but misses. Uh, does my bless? No, it apply. blesses you, okay. not the spiritual weapon. I figured, but I thought. Did the, okay. Sorry, did the owl get the help action off or not? Sure, we'll give it the help action for its its turn. Yeah. So okay, roll so advantage. Yeah. That'll get. For five, uh, for five points of damage. Beautiful. All right. Um, then what I am going to do is, so now that I know the ship's a mimic, um, can I, would my fire breath reach the ship? Yeah, definitely. All right. So I'm going to use my action on that then. All to right. like blow it down, friend. Trying to like get that stairway or whatever. Sure, please do. Um, uh, roll me damage. Um, quick question. I just want to ask. Uh, I know we we we've moved on a little bit, but from the for the future, um, spiritual weapon. It says that you make a melee spell attack. Um, is that still not the spiritual weapon's making the attack, not you? That's fair. Yeah. All right. Um. Let's see here. So, uh, it needs to make a dexterity save. 
No, just roll damage. Uh, I please roll damage. All right, we'll do. Uh, it takes. Oh, oh shit! We'll take ten God. points of damage from that. Oh my goodness. That's got to be the worst spell ever. All right, well, that's my turn. The ship shudders and shakes as it takes damage. All of you can feel the movement of it. Norbert, you are bound by the pseudopod, the sticky adhesiveness of the tongue-like chair appendages. What do you do? Well, first of all, I would like to take my elementals action. That way it's easier okay. for me to move afterwards. Uh, you said one of the chests exploded, right, into yep. loot? Yep, down here. Correct. I'm gonna yell to it. If there's any magical items, grab them. Obviously, it would be using like a uh, you know tenant to determine what is magical. Give me a persuasion roll on the uh, elemental. A persuasion? It, it obeys my commands. Damn. Yeah. Eleven. Okay. Uh, it goes down here to start picking up items. Yep. Yeah. Do I still get uh, to attack with it or no? Not anymore. Um. I'm, Sorry. I'll give you. I'll give you one attack with it. <laughs> oh, it'll miss. And it's gonna lock its gaze. Well, it, he doesn't have to lock gaze, but anybody who looks at him, one creature needs to make me a wisdom save. Okay. Uh, mimic will succeed. It will take and take six some damage. amount of psychic. Six. Beautiful. Uh, I would like to get loose from the mimic that is. Uh, All right. Please make me an athletic me. strength or acrobatics dexterity check. Uh, it will be DC thirteen to escape. I'm you good. do. You rip the tendril off of you, uh, and it retracts back into the chair. Yep. Yeah, that's my third. Okay. The mimics go. Uh, this mimic is just going to step up, uh, and we're going to get three bites at good old Norbert. That is a crit. Norbert, you please take for three me. Three times now. Jesus. <laughs> please take for me a 10 points of piercing and 11 points of acid damage. Uh, Greg, Greg, you're not. Stop. Stop. What? Okay. No more crits. No, no more crits. crits. I see. Uh, the second one attacks with a 21. We know that doesn't hit you. The third one attacks with a 21 as well. That will not get you done. The, Why are you falling so high? The uh, That's only a 16 on the die. That's yeah, but like after like three crits. The <laughs> table can't go through the door. The chair can't go through the door. It's just kind of chilling out here. The two of the uh, chests down here. Uh, well, there's, I believe there's, yeah, there's just two. You're like on top of one. Are going to step up and start biting your elemental. Uh, yeah. The first with a 16. That's and a hit. The second with an 18. Please take 13 points of piercing damage and 9 points of acid damage. So, the question I have for you is yes. non-magical attacks deal half damage to him? Yes. So is it 4 damage from the first attack and then what is it? 6 from the other one? Uh, correct. So that's 10 damage taken. Perfect. Uh, and then up here we have 1 bite. We have... Nope, nope, nope. These already attacked. We have... One bite, one pseudopod, one move, one move, one move. All right, two attacks at good old Alex. Uh, first, the pseudopod will lunge at you f with a 21. Will that hit? Uh, that hits. That's, that's the AC. Please take seven points of a bludgeoning damage, and you are restrained. Uh, I will. Uh, question. Yes. Um, well, let me let me actually use this first, see if, it, if it'll work, and then I can ask the questions to see if it matters. Uh, if I'm able to uh, not intercept, but parry it, 
Will that still um, glue me? If you parry the entire amount of damage, you won't be glued. If you parry anything less than the full amount, you, you will take three less damage by like blood, like blunting the blow. Uh, but you're still going to be glued. Yeah. All right, and then he will try to block as much as he can, and will... see his his whole arm will stick to it. <laughs> and then it will bite down on you with a sixteen. It will miss. All so right. It will bite armor. Uh, the ship uh, is going to use its action. Is it going to attack Grand or Mortimer? No. The ship will attack Mortimer as Pseudopod comes lunging up out of the stairway at you. With a 14, will that hit Mortimer? No, it will not. All right. Alex, it is your turn. You are bound and stuck in this adhesive Pseudopod. What do you do? Wait, I, I still need to roll uh, the damage. Sure. Three damage, yeah. Four damage. Oh, I guess with the ship. Yeah. Uh, all right, yeah, three be... more points of damage for all of them. Um, These are so bad on our side. So, um, what does this adhesive apply to me? Can I attack? I obviously can't move. You are I grappled, as we learned last time. Okay. That means your speed is zero. Got it. Uh, in that case, I will do my best to swing at the tongue and the teeth and the bits and pieces of this thing that's attacking me. All right, please do. Um, is the... Uh, actually, is the one down here damaged? Um, the ones down there are... This is damaged, uh, this is not damaged, and uh, this is damaged. Yeah, you can attack this one. Yeah, I think uh, it might be best to try to remove a couple of these. Okay. Just in case they come after others of us. So let's go ahead and uh, attack this one here. With our 10 feet and our sneak attack. Uh, uh, that will hit. It will take 15 points of damage. And I want to clarify you're attacking this one? Yes, sir. Okay. 15 points of damage. Yep. Um, and I cannot move. Um, don't have any of those. So I believe uh, I am done with my turn. All right. Grand, it is your turn. What will you do? All right. Um, this one is getting double hit uh, once by the sphere and once by my uh, Dolores Bell. Of necrotic energy. Grand, I don't so, believe you should be holding spell slots at this point. Yeah, what are you doing, man? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, actually, you're right. You're right. So, first, give me a, a deck save, and then. Um, it's not bloodied, right? No, no, no. Okay, well, you've then. You've done. I will... To that one, you've done 10 damage. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, first, this. Uh, it takes eight more. And then one, two, three from my wand of magic missile. So you're not doing the told the dead. You're using the wand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, eight, ten more points of damage. Beautiful. Uh, mm -hmm. Question, Greg. Is 18, the one down 21, here? 21, 27, 28. That one will be bloodied. What was your question? Um, is this one bloodied after my attack? Oh, no, that was the first time it took damage. Oh, you had said it was injured. I, this, I one this one here was. has been injured. This one previously was uninjured, and this one is bloodied. Uh, okay, I misheard that. I apologize. Okay. Uh, Mortimer. All right. Okay. Um... All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, bonus action, uh, it'll be spiritual weapon. And it'll be, again, against this crate over here. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, 19 to hit. That'll hit. 
Oh, come on here. Darn things get in my way, can't roll the damage. There we go. Uh, for 11 points of damage, that will bloody the creature. Bloody it, great. Okay. Um, <laughs> so at this point, uh, I am going to uh, use my... Uh, do, 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 do. Both of you are below half health, correct? Correct. All right, so now I think is the right time to use my preserve life. Okay. So I've got 20 between both of you. So uh, how much do you need to get up to half, Alex? You're muted. Uh, Leova. Leova. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, I'm 11 out of 26, so I can take two. All right, take two. Uh... Norbert, you get the rest, however many you can take. I can take eight. Thank you. All right. Waste of some, but that's all right. That'll work. And that is my action. And I'm going to yell to the captain, like, start getting into action. The ship is a mimic. Oh, aye, aye. We'll leave him there, then, if you want. No, like, attack it. We're not the adventurers. You are. Norbert, it's your turn. Do I heal to begin with? Heal for seven hit points. What are you healing? Uh, fighter. You're a second winding, okay? Yeah. Uh, after that, I would like my elemental to come back. I'm like, okay, this is going nowhere. Come back, come back. Hit this table. <laughs> All right. It comes back, and it will take two attacks of opportunity from the mimics. Uh, the first with a critical hit for 14 what? piercing what? and four acid. We talked How much about is that, in, like, when cut in half? Uh, this is going to be seven piercing and two acid. Yep. And then it will be hit again uh, for three piercing and three acid. Okay. It will take a bonk at the table. Like, he's just going to go, like, Hulk mode. All right. Holding the, the treasure picked up in one, like, big hand, it smacks the table at the other. For a 20 to hit. That'll hit. 2d8 plus... Sorry, I keep closing the sheet because it's in a different part of the... It's the 2d8 plus 5 for 16 points of damage. 16 more points of damage. The table will go under. That is enough to slay it. I would like it to move into where this door uh, door frame is. (sighs) Yes, I would. Can it take a second attack, or is it holding treasure with a second? I think hand? that the I, I think if it's gonna hold the treasure, it probably should only get the one attack. But it can still yeah. glare. But it will glare this table or bed or whatever you want to call it. A well, table is like there's me. There's a table and there's a bed. The bed. The bed. The bed. Okay. Uh, the bed will save uh, successfully, taking correct four points. Um, what I would like to do is that bloody chest is giving me the stink eye. I don't like it. Mm. I want it gone. Yeah, definitely. I will bonk it. Okay. For a 14 to hit. Uh, that'll hit. For another 9 points of damage. Another 9 points of damage on the bloodied chest. That is 25, 37. That's not enough to kill it. The chest I is- don't- I don't think I'm still gonna action surge. I think we're fine. Okay. I'm gonna end my turn there. All right. The mimics will go. Mimic here is going to actually save. Is it still paralyzed? We'll find out. Remember, it can move. <laughs> it is unparalyzed. Huzzah. All right. And then this one will go five, and this one will go five. And this one will make a pseudopod... No, the table will make a pseudopod attack at your elemental. Uh, with a seven, it will fail to hit it. The table will bite at your elemental. Also failing to hit it. Uh, How come when you attack me, you crit twice? <laughs> you attack this bloody <laughs> elemental with 10 AC. <laughs> The two mimics in front of you will continue biting at you uh, with an 11. And 
a 19, neither of which can hit you. Uh, this one Where here is going to step away from the fire, and this one here is going to step away from the fire, and this one here is going to step away from the fire. And this chest is going to come out, and this bed is going to move forward. And then we will make a bite attack at Leova with advantage. Um, why is there advantage? Grappled. Because you are grappled by the pseudopods, and part of their uh, uh, kit gives oh. them advantage on creatures grappled by them. Oh, that's what I had asked about last time. Uh-huh. Would... There, they, This is not, like, a rule about grappling. This is, like, part of their it's kit. Okay. Yeah, these, the mimics yeah. have advantage against creatures grappled by their pseudopod. Got it. Uh, with an 18. Nope. Okay. Uh, the ship itself will take a pseudopod attack. Who will it attack? The Me. Ship it's, huh? Me. <laughs> uh, the ship itself is going to attack Grand this time, lashing out with a giant pseudopod made of stairs. With a 24! I think that'll hit you. Yeah, that'll hit me. All right. We found somebody a 24 will hit. <laughs> All you have to do is throw the stairs out. Uh, please take six points of bludgeoning damage, and you are ensnared, grappled. Not that it'll matter much to you. Alex, it is once again your turn. What will you do? Um, Alex will hear some commotion from the ship, and he will yell back, Stay! Fight! There's treasure here for everyone! In the hopes of encouraging the sailors not to abandon them when they're fighting. Mm -hmm. um, hoping that the sound of the elemental dragging around treasure and dropping coins as it goes is, you know, will help. <laughs> uh, and then he will just start swinging at this this thing that's restraining him and grappling him and causing okay. him all sorts of problems. Um... Actually. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, yeah, let's just, uh, no sneak attack. We have the gauntlet. The 15 will hit. It will take 11 points of damage. Uh, um, sorry, the sneak attack is not accurate. Uh, mi minus one, so just 10. I it will take it 10 points of, of damage. Okay, uh, that is enough to bloody this mimic as well. Uh, I was attacking the one that was restraining me, right? This one? The one that's restraining you is up here, the one that's biting you is down here. Do you Wait, want to attack the one that was biting you? There? It, it isn't only These are ranged uh, mimics. These are ranged mimics, if you guys haven't noticed. The yeah, same way they're yeah. attacking you on our ship. Is like no, they're shooting. We're getting attacked by that big ship mimic, but like the normal mimics, they only have five foot. No, this guy's got a ten. They have yeah. ten foot pseudopods and a five foot bite. Yep, yep. Um, yeah. The intention was to attack the one that's restraining me. So whichever one that was. Okay, that's, that's, that's this one back here. Um. Okay. Uh, in that case, I will move right over here. You're grappled so get, currently. You have movement zero. I don't move. I don't move at all. I wish to move. I struggle mightily. <laughs> and, and then maybe I wiggle half a centimeter to the right and then ugh, back to the left. Oh, damn. Okay. Uh, that's good. Alrighty. Grand, it is your turn. All right. Um, so I will move the spear here and attack this one. Bonk. Okay. Uh, so give me a dex say. Will do. Uh, actually, wait, wait. Before I do that, I will fire my magic missile at this box as well. Okay. Or, no, wait. It's this one that is. Uh, I forgot. He's being yeah, grappled from here. He's being bit from here. Okay. Yeah. Then this one. This one. I will fire my uh, wand of magic missile first at it. Okay. For 10, 14 points of damage. Holy crap! My oh my. Uh, that is 24, 32, 35, 41, 42. Not enough to kill it. Uh, and then give me a deck save for that. 14. One. Uh, that is exactly my DC, so it takes half. This thing here, boom, there. 
So two. Four more points, or two more points of damage. Beautiful. All right. That's it. Mortimer, it is your turn once more. What will you do? All right, all right. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my spiritual weapon over to uh, go and attack the one that has just taken the magic missiles. Do we think difficult terrain should affect the spiritual weapon? <laughs> it's, like, it's a floating it's aerial all right, weapon. All right, all right, I agree, I agree. Uh, you're going to move it up here, you said, right there? Yeah. All uh, right. The mind. nine, unfortunately, is not enough. Your spiritual weapon floats over, slashes the mimic crate, but the hide is too thick for it to pierce through. All right. So what I'm going to do with my action is I am going to fire off a guiding bolt at a... Let's do the same same thing. Okay. 21, 21 to hit. To hit. Nice. 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 So it's just level one. Oh, that was really bad. Six points bolt. of radiant oh. damage at the one that it was biting in. Uh, you roll yeah, three ones. Grappling. You roll three ones on three d ten, and you roll three ones on d six. You're rolling yeah, the. And they've been spreading all day. You're you're rolling the uh, against the grappling one. You said. The one, yeah, the one that uh, just took a bunch of magic missiles. I think. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, that will be enough to kill the creature. Blah. Or, oops, wrong thing. Dead. All right, that's turn. Uh, by, by the way, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, does does the difficult terrain also affect the mimics? No, they are no. part of the ship. They are part of the colony. Yeah, All they're right. made of the brain. They are. The also, brain. they have movement five, so like. <laughs> yeah, that would mean zero. I wouldn't right? worry too much about their movement. Yep. I, I just realized after Greg, Greg, what, what Greg said, I think if we kill the ship, all of them dies. They're a part of a colony, right? <laughs> no, I, I think the colony is like how they reproduce, right? So If we kill the ship, distinct, you guys sink. Yeah, they are yeah. distinct entities. Norbert, They're like what are you doing? Young. Boy, element boy, go help uh, the sword boy, you know? Just, you know, waltz <laughs> over there, give it a smack. Uh, Elemental actually would have reduced movement, right? What is its total movement? Oh. Uh. 30. 30. So it'll go 50. If it goes there, it, then. Does it, does it <laughs> does hover 30, or is it like walking 30? Walking 30, I'm guessing. Uh, can it give it's a smack to this guy, then? Dark Elemental has speed 30. Yeah, it's walking. Okay. Can it smack this one? Yes, absolutely. So, d20 plus 8. 13 is a hit. For 14 points of damage. 14 points of damage. Excellent. And one of the creatures from 30 feet away, I don't know which one you want to choose, needs to make me a wisdom saving throw. Why don't you tell me which one it's glaring at? It's, huh, it's the one standing next to uh, Alexen. Okay, absolutely. It will make a wisdom saving throw. It will fail. Roll me damage. It's 10 damage, and it's completely paralyzed and immobile. 10 damage. Well, I have... Well, let me do some math. Hold on. Uh, 23, 33, 39, 40, 60, 70, 80. Yeah, no, it doesn't need to be paralyzed because it is dead. Blech. And as it's passing by me, what kind of equipment do I see? Uh, you see handfuls of gold and jewels, as well as, um, roll me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Roll me 2d15. You see... Five, six, seven, you see a, um, a leather cap. Um, that it has like strange stones beaded into it in like weird patterns, uh, as well as the um, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, a like scroll case. Perfect. Uh, Norbert is like maybe there's more in the back. Could I be greedy? But first of all, let's kill one of the bloodied mimics here. This one. Okay. 
I'm going to try and bonk it with my Warhammer again. Mm hmm. Bonk. Uh, that is not going I'm... to hit. <laughs> The rolling disparity has been insane this session. Right. Correct. And, uh, uh... I still... No, it's okay. That's... Okay, the mimics will go. Uh, this mimic here is gonna move five. This one's gonna move five. The bed is going to move up. The table is going to move up. Uh, the bed is going to pseudopod at you. At me or my With elemental? And it can't reach your elemental. Your elemental is yep. fifteen, I think. Yeah, so it can only reach you. Uh, it attacks you with its pseudopod, and it misses. Uh, this guy, you know what? You do bring up a good point. You've been awful hard to eat, and these mimics want to eat some elemental instead. Uh, this uh, nearest one will take a bite out of the elemental with a twenty. Uh, please take for me two piercing and one acid damage from your elemental. And then yep. the other mimic will bite at you because you're still there with a 23, which we know doesn't hit you. My goodness. Nope. This one here is going to move five feet and it is going to make a pseudopod attack at. Um... Did it attack me through like the ship's mast or whatever that is there? That middle hole thing? Yeah, the mimic can just wiggle its mast around if it wants. Did you reset the music? Can I reset the music? Is it done? It, it it turned off at some point earlier, yeah. There we go. Thank you. That should be... I don't know why it's glitchy like that. There should be, like, an hour and a half of combat music. Um, it rolls the elemental anyway. We don't have to adjudicate it, as it will pseudopod at the elemental. Uh, with a 13, which will hit uh, for 9 bludgeoning damage. Uh, four, right? Uh, which will be four, yep, correct. Uh, and it will grapple your elemental. It's now down to two-thirds its HP. <laughs> this one will move here. This one will move here. And Alex, it is no, it is not quite your turn because the big ship has to attack someone. The big ship attacks Norbert. Norbert, you're getting bit as the ship opens up jaws like appendages underneath you and tries to like bite at your boots. It fails to do so. It like gnaws at your booties. Like it's so tough. Uh, oh, is that for Norbert? That is Norbert. Yes. Would you let let me use my reaction to put one dose of incendiary magical potion into his mouth? You want to give the ship more damage? Oh, no, that's not what I... Okay, no, ignore me. <laughs> I was thinking it's like a burning liquid, but it's fine. Well, Incendiary Demise like... does give damage to the ship, but it also increases the ship's damage. I'm good then. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, Alex, it is your turn now. All right. Um, joined by his fellow sword and now the elemental he will engage in majestic combat with his box all right <laughs> aka the mimic it's a toothy toothy mimic sneak attack active we'll take our swing oh wait uh, greg this this box needs to give me uh, or take damage roll damage hmm? five. five beautiful uh, and then sneak attack didn't trigger there, even though I turned it on and it went for the first one and it didn't, so that's weird. Uh, it's not a D8 to D6, isn't it? Uh, that's a 6, that. just keep Roll. it. Uh, that's 14, 20 total okay. damage. Uh, 20 damage is a hefty number. That is enough to slay this mimic. Perfect. Um, and then... I will not move because it's had some opportunity our thing. We're just gonna stay where we are. Uh hanging out. Um Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. Grand, what do you do from above? Right, Greg, I have a question. Yes. The, the big ship mimic, does it look bloodied already? No. Not at all. 
All right. Um, because I was asking because it's been taking the damage from my sphere. Then yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Right. So first, I will ram this, uh, move the sphere up here, and ram it into this guy. Sure. Roll me damage. For eight. All right. If you speed. Um, and then, how many mimics are left? There's one, two, three, four, five, six in the ship, right? But At least. Uh, there's eight plus one. There's three down here. There's a bed and a table here. There's two boxes here and a All right. bed and a thing so up here. So what I will do is I will reach into my bag of holding and pull out the uh, chipmunk, break its neck, and throw it on the ship, uh, oh, which nice. would summon a giant um, giant chipmunk, I guess. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I it, it uh, does. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have that. It a, gives a, you a dire chipmunk, which... Oh, dire. This fight is getting ridiculous. If it wasn't already so, let me just put that. Oh, you have to use the giant chipmunk in order to uh, defeat the mimic tables. Here is your dire chipmunk. As you Wait, break I, the I, I small feel, chipmunk's neck and throw it down, here. you see it unpolymorph and turn into this creature. Yeah, I wanted to say I threw it here. But, All right, it's down here. Uh, and it will... Which, which one? Is, this this one is the one uh, grappling the elemental, right? Yeah. Uh, no. That would be this one here. Oh, okay. Uh, um, but this no. one is blood. The, the, the ship attacked the elemental. The oh, ship is okay. grappling it. All right, never mind. Then. I lied uh, to then you. The, I'm sorry. That's my fault. No, no, no words. So then the, uh, the giant chipmunk will uh, attack this box. All right, excellent. Uh, it will bite at it uh, with a 20, dealing five points of piercing damage. Um, yeah, and, and this summoning of the, or breaking neck of the, the chipmunk was my action, so that's it. All right, Mortimer, it is your turn. Uh, you're muted. Weird. That's what I figured. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the spiritual weapon uh, back here again and have it attack there. Okay. Uh, the bloodied one. Uh, Let's 17. See, 17. Or six, six force more. damage. Uh, that is gonna do it finally. Uh, you right. slay this mimic. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is. I hate to keep using spell slots when I know I could be healing you guys, but I think it makes sense to uh, guiding bolt again. Uh, let's target this mimic here. Okay. Twelve. Uh, that's a twelve that hits. All right. Just level one, so twelve. Twelve points of that's damage. Excellent. Uh, Fifteen twenty-one. That's not enough to bloody it. And that's my turn. All right. Norbert, it's back to you. What's going on? So my elemental is grappled, right? It is. I can can it move itself. even five feet? No, its movement is zero. Yeah, he's going to make a strength save then. Okay. Athletic strength or acrobatics dexterity. DC 13. So does my elemental have any proficiencies in athletics or acrobatics or anything like that? Um, all of its relevant stats are in the stat block here. Uh, so let's check. It has no proficiencies no at all. No proficiencies. Okay. For a 15 to save, I'm guessing he saves. That's 15 is better than 13. That's a success. I would like to ask my elemental to move slightly. Okay. Um, I would like him to stand in front of Leova. Okay. Uh, so you can go Where the mimics are coming 5, from. 5, 10, 15. Perfect. And no, but he's not next to the sphere, hopefully. Don't worry about it. And he's going to gaze at this bed, trying to paralyze it. Okay. 
Okay, the bed will save. Uh, with a nine, it is unsuccessful. The bed is paralyzed and will also take 12 points of damage, it looks like. Yep. Perfect. Do I have advantage to attack this bed? Um, uh, sure. yeah. No, definitely. Go nuts. Uh, yes, Norbert. Hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna keep my shield on for the time being. Let me just uh, okay. slowly whittle them down. It's fine. Or, sorry, fishing for crit now. Close enough, but not close. For nine points of damage. Nine points of damage. Beautiful. And I would like to move here. Mm, okay, sounds good. The That's me. mimics will go. Uh, this Mimic here, we're just going to have the Mimic bite the weasel. The Mimic will take a bite out of crime. Rawr! With an 18, that is going to hit Giant Chipmunk AC. Uh, the Mimic will do 6 plus 3 points of damage. Um, Grand, please roll me 2d8 HP. Ten! Yes. The giant weasel is bloodied and on death's door, but it is still alive. Oh, wow. Alright. Keep tossing animals out, Grand. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> this thing is gonna yeah, just where stay where it from. is. It's gonna take a bite out of Elemental. This thing is gonna move here, and it's gonna pseudopod Elemental. We have a successful pseudopod for six points of bludgeoning. This is However, good. I will uh, attempt to intercept it. Uh, could you see other than you within five feet of you? You can. You the creature is not within five feet of you. Uh, the this one is the the target within five feet of me. Because you have to be able to reach the target with your shield. All right, I buy it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Nice. So that is all of the damage gone. Cool. Then yes, it will sir. bite then at him. With an 18, he will take 10 and 5. Is or back? He is. Oh, no, Mortimer is the one that left, right? Okay. Uh, so please take uh, 5 and 2 points of damage for the bite on your elemental. Um, and Wait, then, how much am I taking? Huh? Five and two. How much two. is five and two? So, yeah. And then this table here is going to attempt to pseudopod you. With a 16, it won't get it done. This mimic here steps up. This mimic here steps up. The bed is going to attempt to get unparalyzed. It fails. This mimic here steps up. And this one here will make a pseudopod attack. Which it is unsuccessful with. The... They keep increasing in range. Damn. Yeah, how did this one attack? Is that not... Oh, okay. We'll ignore one of those attacks. You're right. <laughs> it's too far away. Yeah. Um, And the table will attack... Or the not the table. The ship itself will attack the weasel, of all things. Uh, oh, it no. will make a pseudopod attack. With an 18, that is going to defeat the weasel. Oh. It is dead. No. Alex, it is your turn. Wait, uh, uh, they take eight damage. And yes, everything I think if you put the, the elemental there, it will also take eight. Okay, uh, elemental, that is magic damage, so it'll take the full eight. Um... Uh, My elemental is now bloodied, by the way. Beautiful. <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, Alex will uh, yell out, No! as the chipmunk goes down. And will attack this chest. Alright. Right. Um, actually... Uh, can I... Yeah, let's actually move to here. Okay. If that's possible. 
Yep. And we're nice. going to be uh, attacking this one with a sneak attack. Okay. Uh, it's enabled. Let's see if it'll actually work. Yep. 13 damage. 13 damage as you smack that chest, which is going to bloody this chest. All right, Gron, uh, it is once again your turn. Um, yeah, uh, so I will uh, ram the sphere into this one again. Okay, so just roll me damage. And then I will break, uh, uh, pull out the the squirrel in the uh, in the bag and break its <laughs> neck and throw it into this square. How do the sailors feel about this wizard throwing dead animals just one after another? <laughs> the, yeah. the wizard is doing strange wizard things. Wizard this is the price of doing there. business with the weird folk. Um, <laughs> trying to remember what the squirrel was. My list of monsters. I mean, it, it, it's a, it's a he's he's coming to avenge his fellow rodent. So yeah. <laughs> It is also a giant. Boom! The and it will attack the chest here. The dire squirrel attacks the chest. Dire squirrel bites the chest. With a 12 that hits, the dire nice. squirrel now deals four points of damage to the chest. Huge. Huge. Yeah, that's it for my round. Uh, round. Mortimer, it's back to you. All right, all right, let's go. Um, so what I'm going to do is have my spiritual weapon attack the thing to the north of it. Uh, 24 to hit. That'll all hit. right. Six For more six points more of damage. damage. You guys are work whittling it down. It is bloodied. All right, and then what I am going to do is... Gosh, I almost want to save... Uh guiding bolt now uh nah it's all right i'll uh yeah i'm just gonna sacred flame it okay so give me a dexterity save uh, it'll just take the damage all right i want to be bolted to jump yeah all right norbert what are you doing norbert is getting confused by these chests like completely disrespecting him <laughs> can I can I try and say something like animal speak? I can communicate as a fur bold, but I cannot understand them back. And I will tell them if you stand back, I will not hurt you in animal language, whatever that would be. Okay, okay, you try that. And I will bonk the bed again. Okay, you have advantage to do so. Pilot. For 11, For 11 points more. of damage. Uh, and you have bloodied the bed. Oh, that sounds worse than wetting the bed, honestly. <laughs> it does, <laughs> yeah. You're uh, not wrong. Cool. The elemental is going to take a schmack attack, the, okay. the one there. That'll so hit. close. So close. For, For 14, 14 points of damage. That does not kill it outright. And can I have a wisdom saving throw? No need, it's dead. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, and I would like to move this elemental five feet to the northeast. Like, okay. uh, yeah, there we go. Perfect. The mimics go. This mimic steps forward. This mimic steps forward. This mimic steps forward. We'll have a pseudopod attack and a bite attack. Uh, in that order. First, we have the pseudopod, a 9, not gonna hit you. Then we have the bite, and it's a 7, not gonna hit you. The table freaks out and moves 5 feet, still not within range. The bed tries to unfreeze itself. Unsuccessfully. Um, this mimic here... Does it fight weasel? Does it fight man? 
It fights Weasel. It will take a bite at the giant dire chipmunk. Uh, squirrel. Dire squirrel, correct. This is the squirrel. Dire squirrel. With a 15, that'll hit for 14 damage. Roll me a 2d8. No, this one will not survive. Um, and then it'll move up here. And then the bed will move here. And it'll take a bite out of crime. Uh, with a 15, that'll hit the elemental. The elemental will take, uh, half of 11 is 5, and half of 5 is 2. 7 total damage. They're whittling him down. They are. And the ship itself will attack... The elemental as well! The ship opens up little bits of teethy marks in the floor and tries to bite the elemental to death. Uh, the 12, that'll hit. Please take. Miss, miss. 13 AC. Isn't it 12 AC? Okay, 13 AC. Never mind. It does 14, not... actually. All right. 14, actually. Oh, even better. Okay. Uh, Alex, it is your turn. Uh, Alex, Alex yells out again as another ally chipmunk goes down bravely in the fight, just out of his protective range. Um, and he will attack this terrible, terrible chest. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Uh, there's no one next to him on 14, there's no sneak attack, so just a regular... Right here. Uh, with a bless. 12? 12 is a hit. Uh, that'll deal 21 uh, damage to it. Oh my no, God. I apologize. Again, sneak attack was in there, even though I turned it off. I don't know why it's doing that. It's uh, 16. Ignore the five. 16. 16 point of damage is still pretty good against a bloodied chest. Uh, no, this one was just recently bloodied, though. It is not dead yet. All right, sounds good. Uh, in that case, um, so technically these chests have a ten foot range because of the pseudopod. Correct. So if I were to move here, I would not be leaving its, its correct uh, range. And correct? you would take an opportunity attack. No, because you I'm would not still be leaving its range. range. You are correct. Yeah. So I'm gonna move to he- no the fire. Okay. Um, move, move, move there if you can. Uh, right here. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Uh, it puts me out of range of the elemental to protect them. All good. Uh, is, there, is there a reason that you want me there specifically? So elemental can swoop in and kill this mimic. All right. There is no, space no, for no, him to move in. I'm uh, it, it, it. it can move through friendlies, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where oh, is it going to stand? Oh, oh, but it can't stop it. Um, in that case, I'm going to move to here. Yeah. Okay. You can move around me and still. Ron, it is your turn. Okay. What will you do? You, you left uh, the range. Oh. What? One. Oh, I'm so sorry. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. On this. On. On you this one. Twelve points of damage to that mimic. Beautiful. I will do this. You expend your wand of magic missiles again for nine, twelve points of damage. That will slay this mimic. It, it lies dead. Dum, dum, dum. Its Finally, tongue moves out of its will, brady lid. That will activate my passive, and I regain two hit points. Nice. Does that work on a slay. magic missile wand? Mm-hmm. The, the wording of a Grim Harvest is that it. it just on a use of a spell of a certain. So it's like the, you didn't the way use it's a worded, spell. You activated a magic item. Yeah, the way the way it's worded, it says when you uh, when you kill a creature with a spell. Yeah. It doesn't use and the word it cast. It, it does say magic use. So but the you didn't cast a spell. You look. activated a magic item. I don't think yeah, you get your grim harvest. Wait, wait, look here. This is the wording. It, it's, it is, hey, hey, hey. It, l- it like Greg Rule, okay? At second spell. level, you gain the ability to reply from energies you kill with your spells. Yeah, this you is You didn't my use spell. a spell. You activated a magic weapon. Or magic item. But it, 
the I am originating the spell, right? Like, no, um, the magic item is. That's you're just the magic activating item. an instrument. That's not your spell. Okay. All right. Mortimer, it is your turn. I'm running out of targets. Uh, <laughs> you are. Boy, there's uh, plenty of them here. He can't see you in I, there. There's a roof over your head. I know. Can I see that one? Or... Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is... Let's see, how far can this... I think I, I can move it, what, 20 feet? So 20 feet. exactly enough. Yep, you can and indeed. I will... Virtual weapon... 19 or 11, 11 force damage. That combined with the other damage it has taken will bloody. All right, and then I am going to guiding bolt it. Okay. That Ooh. unfortunately. Oh wait, will uh, miss. hold on. I get a D4. Oh, you are blessed. Yeah, if you roll uh, four. Only a two. No, nah, the two mind. will not get it done. All right. That's my turn. Norbert, it is your turn. Hulk smash. For a 17. 17 hits. For 18 damage. Oh my god. Okay, that's actually close. Um, took 11 and 18 and 12 and these little ones. Oh no, it's not dead. It's on death's door. It's gonna gaze into its eyes. Ah, oh, roll me damage. Even on a successful save, it dies. At this point, I would like to tell her, drop the weapons and help me here. Or drop the items and help me here. So all the loot is just going to splatter in front of uh, Leova in that direction. Yep, all the loot splatters down on the ground. And uh, it's going to move like 15 feet. It can move 15 feet on rough terrain, right? 15 feet, correct. So probably like this to get closer to me. Okay, yeah, sounds good. There we go. Uh, me, personally, what I would like to do is I'm um, very unhappy with the chest that keeps attacking me. <laughs> so I'll, I'll give it one one back in return. So. All right. That is a 22 that hits for eight bludgeoning damage. Wonderful. And I would like to action surge because I'm not going to find a better use anyways anymore. Okay. I'm going to attack it again. Uh, 23 for 9 more bludgeoning damage. That is excellent. So they didn't react to me saying, like, stand back, I will not kill you. No. No worries. All right. They know what's coming for them. The mimics will go. The bed is going to do its best to be unparalyzed. Uh, which it fails to do. Uh, this chest is going to move up five. This chest is going to move up five. We're going to get a pseudopod and two bite attacks. The pseudopod misses. The first bite is also a miss, and the second bite is a miss. The table... table's just going to start going to this door. All right, it moves up five. Can't pseudopod anybody. Uh, the ship itself is going to attack the elemental again. Haha, -ha, with a bite. Missing. Alex, it's your turn. Buddy, I think you might be muted. I am muted. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, seeing the ship miss my ally, uh, and uh, Mortimer and Grons helping to clean up this top deck of the ship, I will shout down to Norbert, I'm on the way! And uh, start making my way towards him. Um, we are going to go... Let's see. Uh, this door here, Greg, is it open? Yeah, all the doors are open. No, uh, You can just go here. I'm going to huh? send my fireball that way. You can just go here and attack the bed. Yeah. I could. I could. It's better than going in, in into that one room alone by himself. Which I think you can let up the fireball now, Grand. So, I move down here. And we shall oh, speaking uh, of attack that bed. All right. Advantage, because it's paralyzed. Uh, advantage, yep. And sneak attack. 
Advantage. Uh, it didn't roll advantage, so we'll try again. Because the fourteen hits, 14. we'll take your first damage or, though. So sixteen. Um, plus sneak attack, be six in there. Seventeen damage. Seventeen damage. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is going to kill the bed. Fantastic. Wet the bed, blood the bed, kill the bed. Jeez. The bed has been wrecked completely by you two. Uh, and then I will take a step back to... Oh, no, difficult terrain, so I can't. Uh, that's it. I think you Done. moved all of your movement, yes. Yeah, 15, yep. Grand, it is your turn. All right, the flaming sphere moves one, two, three, four, five, six, and bonks this one. Wow, good move. All right, roll the damage. <laughs> Nine points of damage. All right, and uh, I I don't believe I can see it, right? Yeah. No. Hmm. Should I go on board? No, I can't. I'm I'm grappled. So okay, yeah, that's a good point. I will try to free myself. All right. Athletic strength or acrobatics dexterity uh, to uh, beat DC thirteen. No, you cannot slip your bonds. Mortimer, it. it is your turn. All right. Um, well, I think it's about time Mortimer helped out Grand. Can he, like, I don't know, whack the bit with his uh, is with his staff and try to, like, sever the connection or something? Uh, you can try to give Grand assistance uh, so that he can have advantage to get out of the, the bonds. Sure, sure. Okay, yeah. And, um... Sounded like you're about to try and whack him. Just start whacking him with your stick. <laughs> yeah, just, I'm gonna start beating on ground, getting all my pent-up aggression out. Alright, no. Um, I'll move my spiritual weapon down here, uh, and yeah, just I'll be giving ground assistance. Okay. I think the other two got it. Sounds good. Norbert, it is your turn. What do you got going on for me? Well, first of all, let's move five feet with the elemental here. Okay. It's gonna gaze into the eyes of the bloodied mimic that kind of got back to on its feet Ooh, and is good. no longer uh, affected by the paralyzation. Is the one in the back? Yes, indeed. Uh, it will try to save unsuccessfully. Nine points of damage? Nine points of damage. Uh, that is... 19, 28, 40... No, it's not dead. But it is paralyzed once more. I will... Step here. Okay. And then here. I'm okay. still by the wall, right? It's not like an empty open space. Yeah, there. yeah, 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 yeah. That's like a window out into the space. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to squeeze in there, and I'm going to attack the one that's closer to me. Okay. That hits. Nep. Honestly, all this combat, and we didn't crit a single time for 12 points 12 of damage. 12 points of damage. Excellent. And if possible, my elemental still has 10 feet of movement, so he's going to squeeze in, in here. He, I don't think he can, because he's going to, with 10 feet of movement, he's going to go here and here, and he's going to occupy the same space as Alex. Okay, no worries. Okay. But with that, the Mimics will go. Uh, this Mimic is frozen. He will try to become unfrozen. And he will fail to do so. This Mimic's going to move up five, and we're going to have a series of bites. Norbert! We have an 18. We know that doesn't hit you. We have a 13. We know that doesn't hit you. Um, we have a bed here that I don't think it can move through your orb. This is a very defeated. Oh, this thing's dead now. It moves here. It's going to go through this door if it can. Um, excellent. That is all of our mimics and Both. the ship itself. The ship itself is going to rock and buck and attempt to knock everybody down on it. 
Um, I want everyone on the ship, so Elemental, Alex, and Norbert, to give me DC 10 uh, dexterity acrobatic saves. Or skill checks. Dexterity saves. Let's do dexterity saves. I don't know why I have it written down as dexterity acrobatics. Just to give me a dexterity saving throw. Dexterity, not strength. Correct. I'm using... Is this to knock me out of the ship or just on the floor? Um, you are in a precarious situation by the window. Uh, I think there is a like a D8 roll to see which way you fall if you fall. I'm using my uh, inspiration on this one. All right, perfect. Perfect, you both brace yourselves. The ship is unable to knock you off your feet. Alex, it is your um, turn. Alex, I would suggest you pick up the, the treasure that the elemental dropped. Uh, I was thinking about that. Um, he dropped it here, right? Yeah, you should be able to reach him. So I can reach here with with my movement, and then the next square over, I should be able to grab it. Is that an accurate uh, reading of the Sure, we'll call it here? that. I don't remember the exact square it was in, so why not? Yeah, yeah I know it was somewhere, somewhere. Up there. So up there in that area, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, let's let's do that. Um, okay. I'm gonna disengage so I don't get a random attack of op crit from this stupid mimic because I know I will if I don't. Uh, I'm gonna move one, two, fifteen, and okay. grab the loot from there. All right, you start picking up handfuls of loot and cradle them uh, with your one arm. Goal, yeah, the goal is to grab the cap first. Okay. And then the roll case and then whatever else I can get. Okay, sounds good. Um, that is my turn. Grand, it is your turn. All right, uh, I rolled the the passive damage for the table and the ship, and uh, now for my turn, I'm moving the sphere here, bonking the table. Okay. And uh, then I'm going to roll at advantage this time because I'm getting assistance. Yes, you are being assisted by Mortimer. Correct. Oh, you still cannot escape the binds of the tentacle. Hmm. Uh, and that's it for me. All right, Mortimer, you have been tugging on this thing. Grind's, Grand has been squirming and squiggling, but he can't break free. What do you do? Yeah, okay, I was muted. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, so I'm just going to say, sorry, buddy, but... um. I think you'll be fine for the moment. Yeah. <laughs> and Mortimer is going to... I feel like it's about time for Mortimer to hop down. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he'll get there. I imagine that's like twice the movement, right? To you get like down. probably just like swan dived into the wood, like crunch. Um, and now you're on the, the ship's deck. All right. Um, and yeah, and he's gonna, so are all of these chests, did they contain loot, basically? Like, even though they were mimics? Or... No. You're gonna try to go investigate the mimics? Yeah, basically, I want to try to help scoop up the loot. Uh, I've got several sacks that I usually carry food and water in. Alright, you will notice sure that we'll... the mimics themselves do not have any loot, if you go up and try to investigate right, them so, with your turn. Yeah, I'll make it, I guess, so, ten... That's another twenty. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll dash over there, okay. and uh, I guess start helping Alex scoop up loot. All right. It's Norbert. okay, guys. I got it. It's fine. Don't help me. I don't need help. <laughs> it I, is your I turn. What will you do? Elemental awesome. gonna move ten feet down. Yes, sir. First of all, he's gonna gaze into the soul of this mimic next to him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mimic will attempt to save. The 17, it saves successfully. It'll take half. Five. Five. Now it has both of his hands free. Now it's yes. full potential and leash. Bonk, bonk. Oh, <laughs> a one hit. One hit indeed. For another 12 points For of damage? 12 points of damage. We will have this one be bloodied. Um, this is for my attack with a Warhammer, with a 9, missing, 
horrendously. I am gonna step five feet up to not be by the window. Okay, perfect. There we go. The mimics go. This mimic is going to step up here, and we're just going to have two attack. I'm gonna move this table. There we go. <laughs> now it's not in the way. Uh, and we will have two attacks against the elemental. Uh, with an 18, the elemental will take three and one point of damage. And the second bite will miss altogether. Uh, this duder here, did he save already this turn? He did not. Uh, he will attempt to break his paralysis, which he fails to do. This table here is going to move its five feet here. And the ship will get to make a choice. The ship is going to attack. Looks like it is attacking Alex this turn. The ship opens up its, like, floorboards and tries to bite at you. Uh, with a 16. Will that hit? No, nope, it just... Oh, sorry. Oh, I, I'm muted. It just gets a no, face no, weird. All right. Uh, you Alex. can make a save for this one as well to regain consciousness. I thought I did. Yeah, maybe you did. Uh, okay, that's fine. Okay. Seven more points of damage. Yeah. All right. Uh, Alex will move up to here. And can I attack this uh, table? No. There's a there's walls in the way here. Uh, okay, okay. Is this doorway open? Yes. Okay. Uh, so you could have stepped case, over there. I will. I will stand here. Uh, and if the table gets in range, I will attack it. Uh, okay. Actually, no. Uh, yeah, I will. Sorry, no. I I will dodge action. I'm gonna dodge action. I'm gonna save my reaction to protect the elemental if it gets attacked. Alex's gonna dodge action and just start kind of moving his uh gaunt his you know, massive Titan Slayer gauntlet around, keeping the mimics a bit. Alright. Gron, it's your turn. Alright, um first this. Uh the sphere rams into the um the table. And uh, then Gron will keep trying to free himself. This time without my goodness. Okay, oh, uh, and that's it. Oh, I just imagine like fifty sailors standing next to you and being like, yeah. "I'm not an adventurer. <laughs> I'm not gonna help you." Not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> and Grod, like, don't worry about it. I got this. Mortimer, what are you doing? All right, cool. Um, so what I am going to do is. Uh, first off, move the spiritual weapon over to the doorway so it can attack that table, which it will do. Um, 22 to hit, or uh, hit. six force damage. All right. Um, and a he'll move table five, ten. Um, and I guess he will. What he will do for his action is he's gonna. Just uh, cure wounds, Alex. I think. Okay. Uh, so this is at second level. Uh, do... So you get 16. I am fully healed and feeling amazing. All right. Uh, Alex, Alex receiving the healing sort of like flexes and gives you a, a nod. Thanks. Mm -hmm. There we go. Thanks, sir. All right. That brings us to the beginning of a new round. You guys, we have been streaming for almost three and a half hours. <laughs> I did not expect you to fight tooth and nail to the very end of this encounter. Um, you make some guy. Shall we? I was. Yeah. Shall we like just say that you win this fight at this point? I, I don't think these sure. mimics are going sure. to kill you. 
I'm sure. sure. I'll, I'll take that. Otherwise, for the next couple minutes, it's fishing for random crits, which I don't think is great viewing for anyone. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, you win this fight, eventually. You can't kill the colony of mimics. It's like... Thousands and thousands of mimics, even if they all have like 50 HP, that's still like 5,000 HP. But you can kill the active mimics, they die. Um, you will get a chance to loot the entirety of the loot table for the mimics here, and I will make note of that. Uh, you return to your ship, and like we haven't even like gotten out of this encounter, so let's let's take a break here. <laughs> um, because we've been streaming literally for three and a half hours. Uh, yeah. And then on the when we come back from our break, we will um, move on to what we were actually trying to do and see if we can get that done. <laughs> right. the, legend, the legendary one and a half hour mimic. Fight. Yeah. I love it. All right. It's <laughs> two and a half, two yeah, and a half no, it hour was, mimic. It fight. was much yeah. longer than one and a half hours. Um, all right. So I, I'm going to put the break screen up and we will see Twitch chat in like five or ten minutes.
And welcome back, Twitch chat, to Land Beyond the Mist. Uh, we just had the longest combat, probably, ever. Uh, Non-fourth edition. And uh, <laughs> you guys are just finishing looting an entire Mimic colony disguised as a derelict ship. Um, the... uh, Greg, do you have the stream back up? I see the break screen still. Yes. No, it's working. Perfect. Yeah, there's just a delay. Yes, uh, okay. the stream is up. Ah, uh, there it is. I just have to refresh it. Sorry. Carry on. Okay. Ah, uh, um, you're traveling <laughs> to the the BFM Isle. Uh, you make it there. Uh, the the rest of your journey goes uneventfully. Uh, and you arrive at your destination of the large island. Um, now that you are here, you disembark from a, a very spooked and weirded out group of, uh, sailors, you hauling your, your loot on your backs, uh, from your, your ship. Um, strange stories will definitely be circulating about, uh, your exploits in, against the Mimic Colony. Uh, as, the uh, as you disembark onto the isle, uh, what do you, what do you do? What is your plan here? <laughs> I think need to Brittany, find a man. Really, yeah, really. Brazier! Get me to a brazier! Ron was about to say the same. I, I have the, I bought the ingredients, actually. Um, I don't know if you have them, but... Yeah, I... Alright. Uh, there is a um, small town in the center of the... Not a small town, like a small city in the center of the aisle. It is a, the place of a manor of a like local minor noble of shallow rest uh they trade in obsidian from the large volcanic mountain um and in tropical um like produce uh you you find your way here from the port fairly simply um you can rent um a brazier uh for oh for 19 gold pieces according to the dice uh what? Parent- Apparently, the uh, brazier is quite expensive here on BFM Isle. Just for renting. Mm, yeah. Ron is, is having second thoughts. This is not worth it. Uh, okay. Leova, can you spot me um, six gold? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and I, I presume we took a short rest uh, on the rest of our trip here. Right? Your, the rest of your trip would have included a night's rest. You, you ran into okay. that in the, okay. in the evening. Um, no, if Leo is going to give me six gold, I will rent the brazier and summon my familiar again. Okay. All right. Then, I mean, if, if you rent it, I can use it as well, right? <clears throat> sure. I mean, we'll, we'll say that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, this is literally a, a one hour deal, right? It's already pretty steep for one hour. Yeah. I like mean, I, I, I imagine by the time uh, Norbert's done with it, it's like hot and smells sulfury. Maybe it's got some imp poop on it, you know? <laughs> imp poop. All right. Funny, funny. Um, Greg, can we, um, well, there's sort of that. Can we get an in room and get like a, a full night's rest here? Is this a safe location? No, we already got it on the ship. We just need to find a, a, a rowboat somewhere. We, we need a long rest for Leova's wounds. Exactly. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm fully healed. Yeah, you no, have a wound. Your wounds disappear until you get a, oh, a full wound. night's rest yes. in a safe and secure location. Um, during the travel yes. phase, that doesn't happen. Right, right, right. Okay, so we're still like technically in the travel phase then. Uh, no, you've arrived at your destination. Right, you're you're now adventuring. If you would like, you may spend the night in this manner, rent a room at an inn. Uh, figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, that's sure, fine. Yeah. We can we can do that. All right, awesome. Um, in cost oh, okay. will be the inn's really cheap. People apparently rent braziers here and then they leave. Um, so the <laughs> inn is only going to cost you two gold. Uh, each or total? Total. Okay. Got it. Wow. All right. I okay. You got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I might as well. Alex already has a second coin. Zai. He's like, hey man, you're helping lighten my load. Believe me. <laughs> Leova. Very cool. Sorry, Alex. Mm-hmm. You've been so nice to me. Would you like a flagon of incendiary, incendiary demise for yourself? 
<laughs> well, hopefully not for myself, for somebody else. But yes, I will, I will hold on. I'll, I'll give you a flag and with three uses then. I will DM you the... Okay, thank you. Yeah. Is it possible, Greg, while we are uh, spending the night here, like you said, uh, let, let's just say we're at like the town's in, the city's in. Um, mm -hmm. Is it possible we could like ask about like whether um, the innkeep knows of any captain who's willing to like circle the outskirts of the Siren Isles? Uh, I don't know. People around here are suspicious of them just as much as anyone else. If not more, we've seen the sirens, a few of us ourselves. We're looking for quite a, a crazed man. Uh, how much coin do you have, huh? We have enough. You have enough. Can't we just rent a rowboat? That should be uh, enough. Right? We, can, we can row out from a ship. I don't want to row. Uh, I mean, I, I uh, another a group uh, told uh, of an adventure they where they did exactly that. So. I, it's possible. Do you have the the desire? Sh uh, a, a small vessel is easy to rent. You can row yourselves around the aisles if you desire. All right. Well, as long as the seas aren't too choppy, then I think that's fine. Uh, yeah. Do you know where we could uh, go for that? Yeah, anywhere around. To the, you, you're in a port city, so there's there's plenty of vessels. I'm sure we could get you one. Oh, um, one other thing, sir, and I'll like, um, uh, tip him a gold coin. Uh, have you heard of any of the Siren Isles that are inhabited, or perhaps have uh structures built on them, a cabin, perhaps? Hey, they all have structures on them. Uh, the, how do you think people learned of the Siren Isles? They went there, and then the sirens got them. There, there are old structures there from forgotten times or older times. I know no one who would live there now, or at least no one alive. Hmm. What about, and I try to describe like the shape of the island that was described to us. He scratches his chin. Ah, uh, I don't know. Let me see. Oh, uh, that could be the, like, northeast aisle. There's a, a small little, uh, I would almost call it an islet uh, nearby. Uh, there could be, a, there could be a, a small, kind of weird olive-shaped aisle, like you describe. Mm -hmm. All right, well, hopefully that's what we're looking for. Thank you. I, I rolled my hit dice, and we get them back during the long rest, right? So. Uh, you will spend any number of hit dice that remain in your pool. So you had a night's rest uh, before. You would have spent any number of hit dice that remained in your pool to regain HP, after which you would have regained one half of your total rounded up for use in the next day. When you rest here, you could spend all of those hit dice again um, to regain HP. And then you would regain one half of your hit dice total rounded up to be used in the next day. Yep, that's you what I did. You also regain any spells or class features associated with a long rest. Um, and this is a safe and secure location, in this town here. Uh, so your wound would uh, dissipate out. All right. So... I think then, gentlemen, if we spend the night and assuming nothing untoward happens, we'll go out and rent or rent a rowboat and head to that island he mentioned. What do you all think? I also love well, my uh, magic missile wand. Yes, and I agree. We we can uh, go. Um, if possible, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be helpful against sirens, but it's better to try than not. Me and Grom have done it in the past, when we were hearing magical songs, we made ourselves some earplugs made from wax that made us more reliably stave off the effects of magics. I would recommend you buying some candles and making earplugs. I believe oh. we bought some already. Yes, well, I already have candles, so I use them in my rituals. Yes, we can melt some of those, and once they're soft, we can form them into uh, earplugs, certainly. We can do yeah, that over the night. We should do it as soon as we get on our rowboat. Yes. Yep. 
Um, and I'll prepare those overnight. Greg, is that all right? Yep, absolutely. You prepare cool. some uh, wax to plug the ears. You rest up, and you rent a rowboat on the next day. Uh, the seas are calm enough that you decide it is worthwhile, and you begin to sail to the northeastern isle. There you How will much find... does it cost to ro- rent the rowboat? Uh, it will cost you a down payment of one gold piece, uh, five silver, right. which will be returned to you if you return it. I cover that. All right. And uh, I also purchase uh, one extra day of rations. We had one extra from the boat ride, so now we've got two, basically, for this. Is that cool? Um... Or I can purchase two. I will. Ones. I will allow it. Um, in general, rations are not something you purchase outside of a travel phase. Um, but th- it's fine if you want to to spend four more gold to feel secure uh, as the provisioner. Um, we'll let All that right. happen yep. right here. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, you set out. You begin rowing. It takes you a good chunk, maybe two or three hours, to cross the seas uh but uh you do manage to get to that northeast isle on the far side of the um excuse me on the far side of uh the siren isles uh there there is a a small inlet uh or small islet uh and you will find um a like shadowy outline um, in the backdrop of what must be uh, a cabin in the center of the aisle. Uh, but it will require trekking through uh, the aisle itself to get to the center of it. As we're getting there, do we notice any like any movement, any like I... any possible threats? Yeah, give me a perception check as you circle the aisle. I'll give you advantage as you've kind of like circumnavigated the the islet looking for it Oof. a 10 uh you do not notice much in the way of movement seems the islet is fairly still all right well ground put your back into it bro <laughs> <laughs> all right you make your way to the like shore of the isle um, tie up your rowboat for use later and begin making your way through the aisle uh, to the center of uh, of the aisle where you saw this like outline uh, of what could be a cabin or a little small manor house. Um, as you push through, uh, I want you all to give me a survival wisdom check as a group. Uh, we will see how effective you are at navigating your way through. Ooh, a 26. Ooh. Very good. A 24. 17. <laughs> <And a two. laughs> uh, well, we have 50, 67, 69 noise uh, divided nice. by four. Huh? I, I was just saying nice. Don't mind me. <laughs> noise. <laughs> um, uh, divided four ways. That is a brilliant 17. success. That is yeah. a brilliant success. Uh, you will quickly find. Uh, kind of hidden amongst the shoreline's debris, a small path uh, made of cobblestone leading its way deeper in. Um, And as a party, you can either follow that or use it as a guide, uh, and it bypasses much of the trials and tribulations of the the isle. You make good time, um, and you are quickly... Uh, seeing this kind of looming, what looked like a cabin is more of like a small but old manor house uh, in the distance. Um, your lookout, Alex, uh, give me a, a perception check as you make your way through this aisle on the way up to the uh, manor house. Uh-huh. A 15. Alex, um, on, about halfway through, you're, the, you're coming up, maybe a little bit more, you're coming up on this manor house, you now know what it is, uh, you're following this path, uh, there's an aisle, or a, like, a, like a small outcropping of rock and dirt through what would be like kind of a bog on the island, uh, with a huge pile of 
rotting moss and twigs and leaves and vines, uh, which was kind of notable just for its size. Uh, but you can see something glinting at you from the top of the uh, pile of garbage. Uh, it appears to be this, a gemstone or something capable of flashing brilliantly in the sunlight uh, and catching your eyes. Uh, what do you do when you notice this? Um, Alex, uh, he, he, he freezes, uh, in, in terror and he, he, he gets that sort of, uh, PTSD flashback face mm -hmm. to his very first mission where half the people he went out with were eaten by horrible plant creatures. So seeing this pile of leaves and miscellaneous debris glinting tantalizingly just out of reach you know uh it's 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 bringing back some some dark memories mm -hmm. so he is going to yeah i think i think he will just turn back to the others and just try to stammer out something but they wouldn't so much hear him say anything as see him like uh, 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 uh like pointing like helplessly to the the massive vines uh unsure how to how to proceed as you uh, stammer at least this, them. as you stammer this out to your party you will all look in the direction and you will see the same glinting um light and it is indeed coming from a large gemstone it seems to be embedded in the pommel of what is a hilt stuck in the top of this pile of trash and leaves and vines and rock. Mm. Uh, Grant, could you perhaps um, shoot one of your spells at that that no, no. pile of stuff? I, I, I was thinking, uh, isn't our newly minted uh, arcane friend uh, Norbert a newly appointed wizard, uh, do you maybe have a, a cantrip um, that uh, can pull <coughs> a distance? Oh, would you ever know that? Indeed I do. I do have Mage Hand. <laughs> um, let's all stand 30 feet away, ready just in case. Shields drawn, weapons drawn, and I will try to pull it from a distance with a Mage Hand. While trying to right. guidance myself with my holy god using arcane magics. You want to stand 30 feet away from the, the creature? Yes. From the creature? Uh-oh. Uh, from the <laughs> pile of vines and stuff? No, no take backs. It's a creature now. <laughs> we stand 300 feet away with bows drawn. I've got, I've got a guiding bolt prepared if it starts moving. Um, exactly. Mage Hand uh, has a weight limit. What is the weight limit? Five pounds. You are unable to... 10 pounds. 10 pounds. 10 pounds. 10 pounds. Ten pounds. Slide. All right. What I want from you is a sleight of hand uh, to pull this blade out without any... Um, without any disturbing what you might suspect to be a creature of rot and vine. <clears throat> Would you give me guidance on this? Yes. I think you could guide yourself. 21. Oh, beautiful. Nice. You pull from the thing softly, easily, without disturbing it. Uh, the A large, l bright longsword. Um, it is beautifully imprinted with, like, um, a large sunburst down the blade in gold. Uh, the blade itself seems unmarked by time and wear, uh, and there is a uh, bright gemstone on the bottom of the hilt. Mm. I don't think we should use it for now until we get it identified. Mm -hmm. Any any yeah. complaints about that? No. Uh, no Alex, um... Alex just kind of shrugs like you couldn't use it if, if you wanted to. True. Uh, okay. Mortimer, you were saying? 
Uh, yes, I, I, I think we, are, we should hold off. It does look like it, it, it is something important, though. For sure, we will want to unravel um, this mystery well, later. From a distance, does it bear any of the sort of markings or symbology or even like design or coloration that we've seen from the, the crown or from other like rhyme view royalty, like the king perhaps? Well, you and Tom's worships the sun god, doesn't he? He does. Mm-hmm. Is it that symbol? Yeah. It is not. Okay. Um, but it is a big, like, sun emblazoned along the blade with rays, mm-hmm. like, working its way down. Like, instead of a blood gutter, it's like a sun with, like, a ray down the, the bottom of it mm-hmm. in its place. Um, well, we can put it away. And, in terms and of it, it matching the crown, um, I want mm-hmm. you to give me a history check to know the answer to that. Uh, I'm going to say DC 15. Okay. Can everyone roll this um, or one person? Uh, who? Uh, it was... Uh, I have history. <laughs> yeah, Choose one I, person I, among the party to, to make the roll. Uh, I'll I let you guys take the, the, the best one. Originally, I do have a book for advantage, but I don't know if that would apply to this particular role. You uh, it, took a book oh. on the history of a noble house, and it was Shallowrest and Thornrest, like, conflict. Yes, um, and House Dustin. I, I will let you use it, because I think that this is answering the question for you, I guess, but it is consu- like it is it is somewhat consequentially related. Um, so okay. yes, expend your book, take advantage. Yeah, he he would probably use it regardless to try and establish whether the mm-hmm. link is there in some way or not. So that would don't go for that. Uh, if you guys are okay with with me making the roll, of course, yeah, yeah. Uh, history with take like, guidance. Link. Uh, yeah, if you allow guidance, I will sure. go for guidance. Cool. That is a 15. Uh, that is more than enough with your with your guidance. Uh, yes, in fact, as you consult the book and think back, uh, this doesn't bear any markings of Rhyme View or the crown, um, but there are images of, like, nobility of Rhyme View uh, wielding or carrying a sword of similar make with this sunburst upon it. Interesting. Oh, similar to me. Uh, so, when you say that, do you mean that he, um, Alex can tell that the design of the sword uh, there does not match the design on the sword of a sword? No, it looks the, it looks the same. It, yeah, it, I mean, just it, like it, the, the been... pictures are pictures, they look similar. Yeah. Okay. I, I wanted to clarify. Thank yeah, you. this is just a, a further indication that we are on the right path. I so agree. Definitely head it's to the map. Like someone is copying and counterfeiting royal artifacts or symbols of power. I think this one might be real, though. Well, but, I, I uh, think we, we should be. definitely head to the manor. There's, we're on the right path for sure. Okay. Sorry, when looking at the manor, usually they have like flags flying, like you know, representing who they belong to. Is there any some sort of symbology on the manor itself? There is not, no. Um, and what sort of manor is it? Is it like a large, uh, like marble built manor? Is it made of wood? Is it like a military designed? Like, is it, like, obvious something uh, As you approach it? closer, you finish the rest of your way to the the manor. You will find it to be an old make out of wood, painted white. Um, it reminds you maybe of, like, uh, an old southern manor house um, in the United States. Uh, the... The manor has kind of, like, a, like a small balcony on the second floor, um and you know has some old kind of pillar like architecture on his porch um what you will notice as you approach um is milling about the manor are many 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 skeletons uh there seems to be uh, a num like tens and tens of skeletons uh in various like militaristic formations the way you've seen them before their backs are to you as you approach, and they seem to have blades and weapons at the ready 
as they are almost encircling the manor. Do we have the crown with us? Uh, sure. Would one of you like to put on the crown and try and command them? It's... I don't think... That's not how the crown works, right, Greg? Yeah, like, it has so to be put on the skeleton. And... It's a clever oh. use of it. Um, it's yeah, not the cool. intended use, but I'm happy to give you a chance if you'd like to wear the crown and try um, it. Grand. Grand. Your time to shine. <laughs> uh... Ah, whatever. Well, I'll do it. Yeah. But before I do it, uh, I will cast on myself protection from evil and good. Okay. And then I will don the, the crown. And With great power the... comes great responsibility. All right. You don <laughs> the rusty, broken crown, the mimic of the... The copy of the copy as the uh, lore told you, uh, and you step out in front of the manor in an effort to command these skeletons. As you do so, uh, you hear, like, uh, a voice in your, in your head from the crown. It is booming and aggressive, and it yells, Vengeance! 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 I want you to make me a uh, wisdom saving throw at advantage for your protection against evil and good uh, to maintain control with the, the crown. You're screaming in your ear. It is a 12. Oh. Ooh, you're close. Uh, that is going to be just enough. Uh, you hear the, you feel the words vengeance the forming in your lips and bite it down. And what do you say and do instead? I turn to the skeletons and uh, raise oh. my arcane focus, the my glove with the bones attached, and command them to kneel and no to to return to the earth. Like, lie down, you know, like, yeah. So you're trying to make them destroyed, that you're yeah. returning them to the earth? Yeah. Basically. All right, uh, absolutely. <laughs> you do so, and you see uh, tens and tens of skeletons, whole squadrons of skeletons dissipate and destroy, their bones falling into dust, the blue kind of energy that keeps their armor together, uh, like just dis like dissipating off of them the crown on your head shatters and breaks uh and these skeletons are no more oh grand i'm glad my faith in you wasn't misplaced mm, wow yeah grand is uh taken aback at, at, at this display of necromantic energy and uh yeah and also but at the same time really intrigued and interested very and he will good. approach uh, the the piles of bones. Are they are they are there still bones or are they completely t turned to dust? They turn to dust. Yeah. yeah, he will definitely collect some of the dust uh, for further re research and also the 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 pieces of the crown if there are some left. Sure, you can get some pieces of the crown. Um the Manor now is unblocked. You may enter in if you would like. Do we see any movement, any shadows in the windows? Uh, sure, yes. You see a single uh, shadow in the second story window of the manor looking out. Oh boy. And, and with the skeletons all destroyed, if we pause a moment, do they do anything? Do they come out and say, thanks, buddy? Uh, no. Uh, they seem to be watching you. Uh, um, what do we do, guys? Should we ask them to come out? <laughs> Should we say, we know you're up there? Just, just knock on the door. <laughs> oh, you're the wall. Uh, Alex After you, will, Mr. Wall. Alex will I will knock on the main door of the manor. Uh, politely and loudly. All right. You walk up onto the porch and you rap on the manor door. Uh, Leova, if you try to say something, I think you're muted. 
No, he isn't uh, muted. You're no, just I wasn't muted. It was just uh, at the same time as you, but I was going to like wave oh. and try and say hello, but you walked right up, so it's the same thing. Okay. Um, after you knock, it's a, it's a pregnant pause, uh, but eventually the door will creak open just enough for a face to kind of peek around the edge. Uh, it is a half-elven woman who seems to have the same kind of features of a drow um, is her half-elven form, the uh, blood of the Duskrin line. Um, the like dark complexion of purples run through her her skin, uh, and the kind of light, almost silvery hair falls in curls, framing her face. Um, and as she peeks around, she goes, "Who are you?" Uh, Alex will uh, bow respectfully, um, and then he will say. Uh, yeah, he will say uh, in Elvish, um, we, we come in peace. We mean you no harm. You know, it's a very pretty language, and my mom tried to teach it to me, but I never really stuck. More of a common speaker myself. Uh, Alex uh, smiles and nods and says, fair enough. Tell me, you, ha- you haven't picked up any, and then he, and then he says, draconic, in draconic. Have you? Uh, no, I like I said, more more of a common speaker. As you still haven't told me who you are. Oh, my we name are, is Alex. Uh... Nice to meet you. And he bows deeply. You know we're not in the court. You don't you don't have to bow. Why are you here? Yeah. Well, well um... we're here for a meeting. Oh, uh, not you. She that looks is true. you all up and down. Are you carrying the blade openly? I think Norbert has it strapped to his side. Yeah. She glances at it and goes, Oh, are you emissaries? No, not really. We found, uh, we happened upon a group of uh, travelers that sadly met an unfortunate end. And and that uh, you seemingly were destined to, to also meet uh, if we hadn't arrived. Um, they were slain by skeletons. And well, no, they've uh, been but... out there for a long time. I don't know what they were doing. I think they were like keeping watch. I don't know. I was worried Can that. I uh... this? Huh? I want to inside this woman so badly. Yeah, like go is for she it. making like she's saying, "Oh, I don't know what the skeletons were doing out front of this house that I'm in on this strange <laughs> island out in the middle of the bay." Okay. Um, Alex will ask her. Uh, she seems what her entirely name is. truthful to you, Alex. Okay. What are you doing? Uh, Alex will say, uh, "Pardon me. Uh, it's what did you say your name was?" I didn't. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, what what might I call you? Um, my name uh, is uh, Lady Duskrin, uh, but uh, you can just call me Amy. Nice to meet you, Amy Duskrin. And just he bows Amy. again. Just, just, just Amy. Amy. Tell me, Amy, do you enjoy talking through the door, or shall we go inside and have some tea I where it's warm and cozy? The door? Amy, is is your mother the queen by any chance? No, oh, that's my aunt. Your aunt. Uh... So, were you were you expecting a, a group of travelers here? <laughs> no, I was expecting someone carrying that sword, but you're not him. Yeah, I um Did unfortunately you do something nasty to him. No, my lady, uh quite the contrary. I, I believe we slew the evil skeletons that had taken his life upon the road. Mm. I think I would have heard of that. It's the not sword every day was they... um It's not that every day a royal gets killed, especially one that's supposed to be meeting me. Are you talking about the King of Rhymeview? He was supposed to meet you. Ah, 
Oh, stupid, stupid Amy. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, here. She, like, opens the door. Fine, you guys seem mostly fine. As she, like, now sees the big, long, black sword on Alex's arm. Um, as, as she says that, Alex will say, please, uh, if it'll make you feel more comfortable, I will happily disarm. That would be great. And he literally pulls his arm off. <laughs> yeah, says, I think she looks slack jawed as your like yeah. shoulder like unhinges and comes yeah. off. And then and then and then he'll hand it back to uh to Norbert and say, Do you mind? I don't. And as I grab his hand, I would like to cast innately detect magic as a fur bulk without any components or anything along those lines so she doesn't know I'm casting it. Oh yeah. And I would just like to story. look around. Yeah. No, look around the house, inside the house if Oh you know, something uh... shady or yeah, the the only thing that uh, pings magic is a small ring on her pinky finger. Um, it uh, it pings enchantment. Does the sword that he's carrying ping? On magic? Oh yeah, definitely. That's a magic sword. Just make sure. Yeah. When it comes to the strength of magic, right? Can I feel the strength, the difference in items, or no? Um, I, I think right? so to some extent, right? And it's not innate in the spell, but it would make sense to me, right? Um, yeah. The, and you uh, get the school of magic with detect magic too, right? Yeah, you do get the school. That is correct. Uh, the uh, the ring is is not particularly powerful. Uh, it's just a just a pretty like standard looking magic aura to you. So all right, um, now, now that we settled our, inside, uh, okay. Grand I was just wondering whether we're su- whether we're going inside. Yeah, we are. She invited us in, right? Yeah, yeah, she right. waves you in, says, so, tea, you said? Um, and um, she begins, like, cooking up some tea. It's like, I've gotten quite handy at this over the years. So How you, long have you been, been on this? Uh, about six years. This, you um, are sworn to secrecy, I, by the way. I thought that was implied, but I did let of slip how, things. How up. old does she look like? She's a half-elf. She looks fine. Like young, you know, she looks like a, a a young woman. When was um when was the king supposed to meet you, Miss? Uh well, as soon as he could, which apparently is five or six years at this point. Can I uh, can I be completely honest with you guys? I think there's either she's either a vampire or someone who doesn't age, or time travels differently in this island. Because I do believe the king she's talking about wore the fake crown. Just no, no, no. putting that out. So, I, I, I think I, I have an idea of what's going on. So based on her answer just then. Um, so yeah, so like, I'll point to the sword and say, well, miss, we found that sword just outside on the island uh, a short while back. Oh, no. Yes, it was stuck in a shambling mound. Oh, no. Or, well, how? No. If it was stuck in a shambling mound, surely he would have slain it. It's a powerful, powerful warrior. It was uh-huh. on the ground. Um, I'm not sure if it was alive. We uh, managed to extract it skillfully. Mm-hmm. But um, the, the name of the King of Rhymeview, uh, this was King, and I'll say the, the name of the, the last king before uh-huh. the current one. She just, like, nods. Yep. Yeah. Um... Are you aware that he died during the war between Rhymeview and Rustport, Miss? Oh. No. That's not true, is it? That was five years ago. Well, that would explain him not showing up. Although, not why his sword's here. And you have no clue why there were skeletons patrolling? No, they showed up. I didn't like them, but they didn't seem to bother me any, so I just stayed here. How how long ago did they show up? Oh, a while. They're, I mean, they change, I think. Like, they come and go. But the first band, a few years ago, I watch them in the evening, make sure they're not doing anything weird. Uh, would you say maybe five years ago? Not quite, but yeah, close. Are they coming from a? Sorry, are they coming from a 
part of the island in here, or like they sailing a boat into here? I, well, I don't know. You're, um, you've been living here on this island all these years alone? Uh, For what reason? Well, this is a secret island. A manner of a old acquaintance. And nobody really knows that it's here, except for me and a few close friends. And we're going to rendezvous here. You know, well, this was going to be home. And maybe somebody found out. Uh huh. Because there was a note we received just a few weeks ago about a meeting that was supposed to take place here. A That's meeting how we. Like- Years ago, I mean, I've been waiting a long time for that meeting. Uh, tell me, my lady, um, I, I apologize if this sounds forward. Um, were you perhaps set to be wed or engaged to someone? Weddings. Mm, awful. No. Are you certain of that? Yeah, pretty sure I would know. Okay. You don't um, see a ring on my important. finger, do you? Well, we she do. Looks at the ring on oh, her finger. Well, I mean, okay. You don't see a ring on this finger. <laughs> um, is there like a like a mark, or like a ring mark? No. Uh, um, Grand will uh, ask Mortimer. Uh, do you still have this scroll case with you? Um. Okay. Oh, to Mortimer. I, I I don't know that I do, but I can describe it. And, and then, I'll like just descri- yeah. Is, is this your your house? Uh, your no, I oh, have from House that Duskrin. House? That's a, a yeah. minor house of the of the nobility from the human side. Um, a house they had in. They don't do much. They. They're over in the aisle over there. You probably stopped at it on the way here. There's no reason that they would know of your hiding place no, here. No, of course not. Who goes to the Siren Isles? I mean, crazy people. We just smile. Hmm. Interesting. It's all um, very they, confusing. They must have found out about world. your hiding place and uh, tried selling that information to whoever controls the skeletons and uh, (laughs) got betrayed while doing so? I don't know. There are too Um, many questions here, Gron, to make that assumption, but I think that certainly the lady's location is no longer secret. If if you're here for your own safety, um, I I worry that that may be in jeopardy. I don't know who would try to hurt me. I'm mostly here for, you know, the protection of someone else, if you know what I mean. These um, these associates that you were going to meet with, the ones you mentioned, your friends, uh, what was their business, if you don't mind my asking? Were they also nobility? Who do you think I mean to be meeting emergence? these last five years? Well, we already found that out. There was the king of Rhymeview, yes. Alex. Right, but your you, friends you, got you it. mentioned others. You mentioned others. Well, 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 they're my friends. They know that this manor exists. An old acquaintance. Right, right. But their business, their work, what do they do? Uh, they are um, landed nobles of the Chalaris, you know, line. They own farmland and, you know, trade routes along the Wrinkled River. Let's see. This person you mentioned, would they happen to be the one that was upstairs? Oh, that's me. Oh, that was you watching us from the windows? Uh Uh-huh. Like I said, I watch the skeletons when, you know, they show up in the evening, making sure they're not doing anything weird. Um... Do you have any idea what's going on? What else should we ask? Well, she, she, she mentioned she's protecting someone. I think that's the only information we need here. Um, 
my apologies. This might sound like a like an odd question, um, but in in your in your in your experience, um, have you heard, uh, my lady, of any um, um, advances, perhaps from the Shalarest or the court of the Duskwinds to the folk of Thornrest? No. No. Thornrest is a of... small city state at this point. Their influence wanes every day. Uh, and yet, it looks like they perhaps control a good piece of the Wrinkled River uh, trade route. Is that correct? Oh, no. I mean, they touch it, they don't control it. Haven't for a long who, time. Who, Your who aunt um, believed otherwise, it seems. Hmm. Well, I I will just say this. Uh, it seems your secret has reached other people's ears and noticed. Uh, so you probably aren't safe here anymore. I'm and uh, you're not safe in the place I've been staying for six years. Seems a little silly, don't you think? Uh, maybe not. I you mean, you just said but... the skeletons are gone, so that's the only worry I've had. Unless you intend to do something bad to me. No, I, d I don't think we have any reason to. Sorry, we don't have Norbert? any reason to, do we? Sorry, could Norbert excuse himself from the table and just go upstairs? Sure. She's going to go wander around her house? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, uh, Alex will ask her one, one, one last question, something that's been kind of bugging him. He wants to ask it just generically. Um, the skeletons we encountered, both here and in the camp of the dead adventurers that had that note. Um, actually, uh, Grant, did you mention the yelling of vengeance in your head at all during this? No, but uh, I, I knew of the recount of uh, Mortimer and his group that the skeleton that was wearing the crown was also yelling vengeance. And Grant assumes that it's just whoever is controlling the skeletons. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, Alex will ask, um, I, I apologize for how this sounds. I do not mean to accuse you of anything or seem untoward. Um, have there been perhaps some um, legal disagreements, some altered bargains, anything that would cause someone to be upset at you recently in a murderous sort of way? I've been living in a secret manner far away from the court. For five or six years, nobody has anything to say about me. Oh, I mean, b before you moved. I apologize. Uh, no, not that I think of. Alex, um, um, is there I don't know that. Sure. Okay. I want to see what kind of what kind of vibes Alex is getting because I feel like there's something that she's not telling us. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. It seems odd. Yeah, there definitely is something she's not telling us, and it is about yeah. why she is here in in hiding and who who that is supposedly protecting. Uh, does is there anyone anything? Have, uh, sorry, anyone have an inspiration they can give me? Yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, if you don't mind, I roll with advantage. Then that's cool. What What do you want to roll on? Uh, it's insight, just for a vibe on her uh, conversation. Her um, vibe, sure. Denial. No, what's going on. Wait, didn't didn't uh, uh, Mortimer already do that? I I rolled at the beginning. I don't know if that carried on at all. W would that? If not, no, I'll, I'll I'll just roll normally. We're good. You seem to be under the impression that she is telling the truth, as she understands it. All right. Well, is is there anything of interest upstairs? Give me an investigation check. Um, and Greg, I apologize. Did I get the sense she was holding anything back? No, she seems to be speaking forthright and truthfully as well as she understands it. <laughs> no, no, this there is nothing interesting up here at all. No, uh, it just pillows and knickknacks and yeah, really she has an extensive an library of like romance novels and there is like knitting like halfway done and like, no, nothing of your of interest to you here. 
<clears throat> Ms. Just a couple more questions. So the whole reason that we're here is because we were hoping to find out who was raising the dead, right? The skeletons, the skeleton king, etc., and put a stop to it. Do you have any idea a powerful necromancer who that no. might be? I no, I don't know any necromancers. Well, I mean, we mom and and the aunt know the the um, you know we know the court of crag of of Cragmore. They've got some cool necromancy. And then, you know, of course, there's those that live under the mountain. They're weird. The Court of Bones. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're weird. Court oh, of like, Worms. Worms. Worms, Sorry, yeah, worm. that's the one. Worms. Um, They're weirdos. We don't like them. I don't like either of them, honestly. But, no, I mean, I don't know who's raising the dead. Mm. Could be you, for all I know. Well, it'd be kind of silly for us to come here asking about them, but... I suppose so. I looked at Grand. Um, are you this? Are I'm, you I'm not raising any villain? dead today. Uh, well, Grand will say. Uh, I mean, it is up to you. Of course, we will not force you. Uh, but uh, maybe you could help us by telling us why you you are here hiding here and who you are. Uh, wow! All right, let me spell it out for you. So. Me and the king are like a thing, and we're trying mm -hmm. to yeah. run away. And apparently, he's been dead for five years and not standing me up. So, I, in some respects, that's an improvement, but in some respects, that kind of blows. And I, this is a secret, clandestine rendezvous, a manner no one knows of. Guys, I feel like we need to move because otherwise, there's going to be a dead body in this house. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised you spent um, five years waiting here, though. Why? Yeah. Why did you stay so long? Very dedicated. Love, love knows no time, dear Mortimer. Well, I know no woman that patient. I am a half elf. I'm pretty patient. Is there like a basement? Can I steal a bag of potatoes from her? <laughs> yeah, you, there's a. It's a, it's like a fully stocked manor. There's like food. And All right. Um, well, before I leave, I just want to ask her one one question. He uh -huh. will describe um, the uh, Titan, the Titan Slayer, uh, red haired paladin uh, lady that he encountered in the Gauntlet. I just ask if she's heard of a woman that matched that description. Maybe seen her in court, uh, like a big red haired paladin lady. You might be distinctive enough to have. You know, I haven't seen anyone like that in court. If you really want to know about the court, I'm not the one to ask. I don't really like the court, right? It's kind of why we hit it off, because we were both bitching. Mom was mad. Yo, anyway. quick question. Do you recognize the crown? And I point towards Gron with his pretty little crown like a princess. Oh, no, it's, it's shattered. It's shattered. Oh, it's shattered. Alright. I, um, I point towards the shattered crown. Goes, so did you want her back in then, eventually? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, with a sack of potatoes over his shoulder. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're just, like, stealing this food, like... She doesn't mind. She's an elf. Alright, okay. I, I, I think it sounds like you're, you're done with the question. I've just got one last thing. I wanted to, to pull her aside and, and just say... Um, well, we're, uh, apologies for, for bothering you and, and sharing the bad news, but um, there is one other upsetting thing that you may want to know, and I'll fill her in. Um, Basically about the mission that her aunt sent us to do, and how like she made a deal with the Court of, of Worms to sacrifice her first, or sa whatever that meant, uh -huh. um, to gain influence over Cragmorn. And like, do you oh, have good. Like, somebody has some influence comments. over Cragmorn? They're such dickheads. Anyway, was it so Cragmorn like there's not or... a cousin that she's worried about, mm -hmm. or? In Cragmore? No. No, no, her cousin. <laughs> like, I I, no, like, I don't think so. I mean, I have like a okay. lot of cousins. It's fine. All right, I really want to punch this woman, but I, I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm yeah, going to yeah, say, well, all right, well, yeah. as long as you're not worried about it, then fine. Um, 
Yeah, Grand is also uh, getting up from the table where they were sitting and uh, maybe having a quick look around and then uh, is going to leave. Okay. Yeah. She taps her ring on the on the tip of her glass and holds it up and says, Cheers! Uh, it was wonderful to meet you all. Uh, takes a big swig and we'll see you to the door. Uh, Alex will uh, cheers with her and as he leaves... Uh, give her a rally. Ooh, you're quite the speaker, Ooh. aren't you? Oh, razzled and dazzled. Guys. So L- listen, well, Hot Stuff, you're a royalty, right? Well, kind of. Like, you know how many people would have to die before I was, like, royalty, royalty? Yeah, you got a manor, you got a food. And you got 25 I mean, gold pieces, I need a boat. 25? I mean, I do, but are you really going to be a beggar? Come on. Yeah. You have a sack of potatoes over your shoulder. Alex, how <laughs> do really you look like? What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Norbert is going to scratch his head like, yeah, she's right. <laughs> Um, uh, Norbert, what's the what's the uses of ceremony again? What's the like five or six things that it can do? You want to propose like a... to her? <laughs> well, um, it's you mentioned it. it's quite a few things, but we would need to have a long rest here. Uh, but one of them being a wedding. If you want to marry her, I can like you know do that for you. Otherwise, it's like a funeral rite, coming of age, making holy water, atonement, and uh, dedication. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's that's um, not that's pointless. Dedication. Um, Alex are, are we Alex like... would suggest that uh, if if they have time, they do a little ceremony of dedication for her because she's been waiting so long for her dead love, that sort of thing. But other than that, if the party didn't seem interested, no, it's sort of like more dedication to your god's service rather than like dedicated to the person. Oh. Never um, Guys, so yeah, so like we've left. Uh, I see him at this point, like the door is shut. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. Does anybody going... think that there's something off about this? That this woman has waited five years, has just ch- been chilling with the skeletons outside, isn't super upset that her lover, who she thought stood her up for five years, is now dead, etc. Uh, et the thing about elves, their perception of time isn't quite the same as ours. Yeah. So for her, five or six years could have been a few months. Not that bad. Well, yeah, at yeah. the end of the... She's a half-elf, so she still has a... Not quite as long as an elvish lifespan. If you guys want, let's camp over the night in the, in the island. If anything happens, we're going to see it. If more skeletons come, we're going to see it. Otherwise, let's just... Yeah, get maybe we can figure out where they, they come from or something like that. But yeah, I, sh- yeah. I, I think she's telling the truth. I just... She she doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Mm, I agree. I, I for me the only really mysterious thing is why the sword of the king was here on this island when it was clear yeah. that he actually or I mean when supposedly he died in in combat. Uh, at maybe the, he didn't. Uh, maybe he maybe he like did run away. If if the whole point was that he was going to escape when the war happened. Hmm. And and the, maybe the, he did the make it here. Cover up. Yeah. From I, my understanding, if the crown belonged to the king, the sword belonged to the king. The skeletons brought the what do you the call crown it? The was sword a fake, here. Though, remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the crown it was, crown. but like uh, if you if you go out as a king, right, into the wilds, you're not going to be wearing your actual crown. You're going to be wearing some cheaper, nonsensical copy, right? Well, um, perhaps, but I think I'm specifically king, I'm, made. I'm better than everyone. I'm wearing my crown everywhere. I don't know. I think I wear my That's just I, I, I agree with Mortimer that it might have been a cover up his supposed death and that he maybe ran away and uh, maybe came here but died on the way something like that. Do you think he's actually under that shambling mound? I am pretty sure it's a, a shambling mound guy. Wait, I yeah, think Greg. It's... Greg, sorry to ask you this question. Did you say when we saw people looking through the window was it one figure or two? Just one. No. It was her. Okay. I, I, Let's go I to bed. I'm tired. Is, 
instead of letting the king run away and marry someone else and therefore screw up all their noble lines of possession and their royalty and power stuff, they killed him and covered it up. Uh, who, yeah, I, I, this is all just going to be speculation. We're not getting anywhere here. I, I, I feel real good about that, but yeah, but let's let's continue. Um, we should um we should camp out. Try like, are there like bushes we can hide in or something? Like yes, you're you know on like a very have, like, jungly island. Yeah, I, I was thinking like like okay. I saw I like, like, mine, I feel better. Somewhere where we can observe like like the area where the skeletons were, like were drilling, to see if more show up. Mm, yeah. You can do that. All right. Uh, you spend a night resting and watching. Um, no skeletons show up, uh, but I would like each of you during your watch to give me a perception check. Okay. All right. Uh. Oh. <laughs> nice. Oh. I think I think Rod and Alex wow, are just too busy, you actually like, did it. back and forth. You actually see <laughs> them. Uh, more to murder. You on your watch will see a shadowy figure slipping in towards the manor from the coast, um, dressed in a long cloak and with a hood covering their eyes. Uh, they pull out a small key and they unlock the door to the manor and make side i'm gonna rouse like wake them up and say somebody just went to the manor we need to go in and find out what's actually going on so fucking king go back to sleep no yeah i'm ready to go let's go yeah okay let's go let's let's we're i want to just like kick down the doors and like yeah whoever's in there we're gonna hit them in the act you rush in and break down the door Kicking it in in a in a rush, a surprised figure throws back their hood, uh, and you see the um, queen mother of Rhymeview, surprised, um, in like with a with a bunch of uh, uh, like pies and like food and things that she is smuggling into the manor house. She gasps and goes, oh, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Yeah, what are I, you doing? You, oh, you are not supposed to be here. This is private property. You know who That's I am. That's how she's I will been have living here all this time. Oh my, you've been bringing her pies so that, her, you, your son is dead, ma'am, right? No, Why my is son is here? king, you fool. Now get, get out. I will, I will have... I will have I'm gonna, to remember each of your I want to bop her on the I want to just bop her on the head. <laughs> You're going to assault her. her. Okay. Good. I want to just knock her. No, no. Gron holds him back. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think it might yeah. be too late to hold him back. I think she gets bopped over the head and goes down in a slump. <laughs> uh, however, aha. <laughs> Interception. <laughs> well, oh, God, oh, All right. man, you can interpose your We're shield as you pop her over there. She's like, I, I will remember that. You will be imprisoned for the rest of your life. Oh, my goodness. Okay, now we do need to bop her on the head. <laughs> what? Oh, no, no. No, no. Can we please I'm- get off this island? This is like, drag- <laughs> this is like really getting over the top. Yeah, Alex. Alex will will apologize for the hijinks. He'll he'll explain that they're here to try and figure out what's going on. He'll explain about the the skeletons that were outside. He'll say, "I'm." I, were those your guardians? No, they're not mine. Uh, all right, you can't leave. You're not going anywhere. You're sit not down. going anywhere until you explain to yeah, us. Yes, sit the sit down. You. Oh, I just can't believe this. It's, yeah. I need a stiff drink. She goes to the cupboard <laughs> and like pours whiskey for everyone and then like takes the bottle herself and starts drinking it. All right. This witch with a B stole my husband out from under me. 
they were going to meet up here. And I didn't find out about it until after he died. Which sucks. But I figured I could get my revenge anyway. So I gave her a present. Said, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. Was nice about it. Now she wears a little ring on her finger and can't remember a damn thing. Bimbo serves her right. I feel <laughs> bad about it, though. She turns out doesn't eat, really, if she runs out of food and stuff here. The enchantment's pretty powerful. So, I bring her food and stuff to make sure she's okay. I usually have to sneak in. There's no skeletons out tonight, which is great. I don't know what those things are. They're a plague on my rightful land and i don't know why they're here and i'm sure she has something to do with it i don't know what it is how'd you get that sword okay this, this, explains, this explains a lot i'm gonna get up can i go and find her she's uh, asleep yeah i want to just take the ring off of her finger no don't do that oh, it's too late oh we are getting out of here and she goes to leave. No, no, you're not going she's, anywhere. She's running out the door into the dark. Stop of her, Alex. Stop her. I would like to cast a spell. Okay. And I will command command her to come back. Ooh. All right. Let's get a wisdom save. Oh, she is not coming back. She continues to race out into the night. Six seconds later, I do it again. <laughs> You're going after her. I mean, I'm chasing after her, too. We're doing um, the same thing, actually. No, Grand is going to look at what the, the Amy Duskrin has to say now that her enchantment is broken. All right. Uh, the, the ladies will, you will command the Queen Mother to sit back down. You will, uh, force them to talk it out. Um, Amy Duskrin, with the, the ring removed, is upset. Um, and she says, oh, I'm finally free of that awful woman's spell. I'm going to have to ask that you leave her here with me. I don't know who the four of you are. But I can tell you're not working with her. She's much too purple in the face for that to be true. So you're all right in my book. This, my love died five years ago. She brought his sword here so that they could prove it to me. And she gave me a gift of imprisonment so upset do you know this what is, is going so on with the skeletons that's the only reason we're here we want to know what's going on with these damn skeletons <sighs> I think I have an idea yeah finally some answers I didn't kill him and she didn't kill him and he didn't die in the war. Somebody else did. I bet you he's pissed. Restless spirits like that come back from the dead. You want to stop the skeletons? Reunite him with, uh, with the earth. Make his restless spirit peacefully surrender. But you leave this one with me. I'll make her suffer. <laughs> so, Greg? Yep. Sepulcher, we, we go. The, the <laughs> fact... Yeah, the fact that... So, the skeleton that wore the crown wouldn't actually have been the king, is what we're guessing. Correct. Is, is what... Alright, okay. It's starting to make sense now. I think you're right. I have a quick question uh, greg i you cut out really quick D did you say re reunite him with his heirloom no with the earth with the earth oh kill him <laughs> kill him oh, I I I you want, I want us to give uh, him the sword or and that would put him to rest but okay no i, I mean, mean it couldn't too. hurt you could try that 
<sighs> my my people have a ceremony for um making restless spirits calm and pacify. You could try that. Um, I have a book for it somewhere in the library. You know yeah. that if you if you keep her here, there's going to be a war between Rhymeview and Shallow Rest, right? No, there won't. No one knows where you go, do they? You're on business. Okay, let's let, let's pretend like we're gonna let her keep the lady here. Like like let's stop pretending we're gonna let her keep the lady here and kill her. Is what I'm trying to say. Oh no 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 no! I'm not going to kill her. You know what I'm saying. And we can't just kill the queen mother. No, well, we're gonna take us take her with us, go home, and that's it. I mean, at the yeah, end of the you, day, you need to have your have your no, aunt no, sort no, this no, out. No, no, you leave her here with me. I, I think, don't think uh, that's going to happen. Yeah, I oh, think it is. Is, is good enough. No, I've given I, I you command what you her want, to shut up. I've told you exactly what you need to do. I'll even let you keep that blade. That's rightfully mine. Not this one. No, it's actually rightfully hers. No, no. Our, we found it. <laughs> like I said, finders, I, keepers, losers, I think, weepers. Yeah, I think uh, I think your freedom from this enchantment is payment enough for this information you gave us. Oh, oh no! That is only merely what should have been done the moment you saw me. If your story holds up that we talked before. We had no idea. We were You had no idea that this bumbling lunatic you met wasn't on the level. Oh, you were irritating. We didn't You're meet her until you. after we met you. We were only here for the skeletons and following. And now you have that information. Now leave and leave her with me. Look, that's not going to happen. So you can either fight us <sighs> or right. you can go. Well, I think it is going to happen. She lays her hand on the table. Her eyes begin to glow and she begins to cast a spell. Uh, <laughs> she is going to command all of you to leave. Please make me wisdom saving throws. All right. Do, is, my, is my protection from uh, good and evil still She's running? She's neither good nor evil. She's a half-elf. Doesn't that count as pain? No, I guess not. She's a humanoid. You guys are Ain't nobody things, leaving. Though. Ain't nobody leaving. <laughs> well, her magic's weak. She is casting it at level four, so she is quite strong. <laughs> Alex is leaving. <laughs> The only person that turns around or makes any reaction is Alex. Yeah. uh, He just takes a side and says, ah, nobles, turns around, starts walking away. All right. Let's let's take care of this, Norbert Grand. Yeah, I'm 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 just putting my arm and my hand around the arm of the the Queen Mother, dragging her out, and we're leaving with her. Um I Norbert, do we leave or do we like bonk? Uh, no, th- 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 this... while he's at the door and with the, the Queen Mother, he will turn around and say, take your freedom and uh, be happy with it and leave. Yeah, okay. I'll just go with them. While, while she's casting a spell, Norbert isn't even stopping her. She, she, he's just going to gently put his like, massive hand on her shoulder. And with his like, uh, animal furball guy, he's just going to say, he's like, no, you got your freedom. You understand the truth now. You know, and just go home. Think about it. And if you want, you're strong enough to kill her at a later date. And, and he's going to leave. And he, he does have the sword with him, so he's going to say, if you really want the sword, seek me out in the future as well. She That's all he's kisses going to say. at you as you leave. She's like, you know I will kill you too now. You are part of my vengeance. And she turns her heel and like lets you leave for the time being. All right, okay. Uh, <laughs> wow, that turned out really differently than what I thought. I mean, I didn't have any expectations, but okay. Yeah, um, let's head home. Somehow rescued the queen mother. <laughs> yeah. Do we have the time for the sepulcher, or are we just going home? I, I don't think we need to. Um, I mean, 
I can we keep do. going, but like, I don't the, know the how long you can so restless. I think we have gone five hours, and it <laughs> might be a good stopping point, to be perfectly honest. Um, I guess that'll have to be a follow-up quest. The, the sepulcher yeah. itself um, is, is going to be a, um, a bit of a quest. Yeah. Uh, a bit of a of a undertaking. Um, you kind of did this in a little bit of a reverse order than I thought you might, but um, this is this is just fine as well. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this session. Uh, you are going to be well rewarded for it. Uh, but I think if you just want to return home, we can hand wave that and get you guys home here for the the craziness that was this session. <laughs> I sure. wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind seeing personally if we get another random encounter. Otherwise, we can go home straight away. You want to uh, risk that? Uh, here's the thing: yeah. if we do run into anything, it'll take a lot of time. I don't know if we yeah. have another hour and a half to. It's God, already it's nearly two a.m. here. Encounter. Um, but, uh, but the Queen Mother, she she takes us on her ship, so we don't have to pay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You will. You will meet a. Uh, uh, like small contingent of like loyal contain retainers. This is where she went uh, on the mission that uh, she was absent during the uh, lycanthrope uh, encounter. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So, and was this crown also what was mentioned in this letter in that lycanthrope? This coded letter uh, letter that um, John uh, in- decrypted. Uh, I guess that's up to you to to find out. I I don't I don't think that you have that yeah. answer necessarily. That's, that's for another time. Yeah. Alrighty, Sorry. guys. Um, this was this sure was an uh uh interesting episode. I I hope you guys enjoyed it a lot. Uh, Twitch yeah, chat. I hope good. you guys enjoyed it as well. Um, I'm going to wrap it up here. I have a lot of uh, experience and gold and stuff to figure out. Uh, so I'm going to just let you guys uh, give some give some shout outs uh, to the people. Let uh, people know where they can find you on the internet or anywhere else. Um, what you got going on. Um, and I usually just like turn it over to you there. And, uh, and uh, there's a big pregnant pause. So I'm just going to turn it over specifically to discourse because you're at the top of the of the discord call. Uh Tell right. me where they can find you, or, or what's up, and I'm gonna add up some stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm I don't stream or anything. Uh, I'm all just on the Discord, but I just want to shout out uh, Greg again. Such an epic session again. I what I really, really like is that there's like real stories going on in the background, and they span several epi- of different groups and episodes. Ah, I mean, dude, this West March campaign is just really, really epic. I mean, best. I've ever seen. Really happy. Well, thank you. Yeah, it was uh, it was a great session. I definitely did not expect anything to happen. Literally, any of the ways that any of the things turned out. So yeah, that was great fun. I had a lot of time fun smashing chairs with you, Norbert. Yeah, yeah. I think Norbert's uh, hands are gonna be hurting for a while after punching so much wood, but you know. <laughs> After bloodying the bed and killing the bed, and, you know, <laughs> all the good stuff. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I mean that was awesome, Greg. You, you do a great job. I really appreciate it. Um, you guys can find me hanging around the Discord. I'm sure I will put together another mission before long. Uh, yeah, that was lots of fun. <laughs> Um, yeah. I so wonder if we're getting the experience for the big ship as well. Now, what <laughs> I wonder is, are we going to gain or lose reputation with Shallow Rest? <laughs> I, think I feel it's like kind it's kind of both. a wash. I we're think, gonna gain five, and we're gonna lose wash. five. And... Yeah. Alrighty. Let me pull up all of these items in here that we're. This was not meant to be one giant horde that you got in totality. This was supposed to be like things we rolled on, but alas, you spent you spent like two and a half hours fighting mimics. I feel like you deserve it all. Um, is that all the shout outs? Are you guys uh, had your got oh, yourself um, out? 
I did want to say yep. uh, shout out to uh, Greg and to my party the chat for tolerating my uh, pre-game ceremony nonsense. Oh, that was fine. I enjoyed that. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. I think that was fun. I always, I always like. Oh, we're doing a, a, a too much you know, spotlight. Nah. But, no, no. I, 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 I mean, you bankrolled our mission five times over, so I'm not gonna say anything. I guess that makes fun. Sense. Yeah, but, I mean, I'm, I'm really thankful that you uh, scored like that. Alrighty. Um, let's hand out some XPs and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. I would like for each of you to take home 1,462 experience points uh, for all of your mimic slaying. Um, I would like for you to all take home 354 gold pieces each. Hell yeah. yeah. Finally gold. Well, you, you got the whole kit and caboodle of diamonds and gold and everything from the chest. Uh, you will each take plus five reputation with the Conclave of the Faithful. Uh, and you will each take minus five reputation with Shallow Rest slash Queen Duskrin. Okay. All right. Uh, we have a bunch of items. I'm just going to go over them and then we will hand them out. Um... You found the Blade of Radiance, uh, outside of the, the hut. Uh, this is a blade that is plus two hit and plus two to damage. It is both a finesse weapon and a versatile weapon. Uh, it does D8 in, in one hand and D10 in two hands. Uh, it weighs three. Uh, once per day, as an action, you can activate the blade's radiance, causing it to emit bright light in a 30-foot radius and dealing an extra 1D8 radiant damage to all enemies uh, when it attacks. Uh, when you hit with an attack. Uh, the blade cannot be used again in this way until dawn. That is the Blade of Radiance. Uh, you found in the Mimic Chess um, a pair of short swords known as the Dancing Duo. Um, uh, when you attune yourself to this pair of, of short swords, both swords can be attuned at the same time for only one slot. So you don't need to do two, uh, like one for each short sword. Um, as a bonus action on your turn, you can speak the command word, making both weapons spring to life for one minute or until you speak the command word again. When you activate this feature, you can make a melee weapon attack with each sword against a creature within five feet of that weapon. On a hit, the target takes 1d6 piercing damage. As a bonus action on your turn, you can move both weapons up to 20 feet and repeat the attacks against a creature within five feet of it. Um... After you've activated the weapons, you can't do so again until the next dawn. Sorry, can I ask you quickly? Yeah. So it's you can move both blades twenty feet and one with a bonus action, right? Correct. And you attack with both of them with one action to attack. Correct. If I understood correctly. Perfect. Thank you. Wait, you have to spend an action to make them attack. Yes. Bonus it's action. Part of that bonus action with which you move them, like the spirit weapon. It reads like a spiritual weapon, basically. It's essentially, it's a dancing sword, but there's two of them. You're activating them both at once. Does that make sense? Okay. But, uh, no, no but I mean, like, like during, during, once they have been activated, right, you, you can make the move with the bonus action and then attack with yep. that same bonus action, or do you have to spend your action? Or I didn't... Yeah, it, it's just like, you consider it like spiritual weapon, right? It's a dancing okay. blade, it's a spiritual weapon, but there's two of them. So, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, the next item you found in there was an alchemist's cap. Uh, while wearing this head cap, acid, cold, fire, lightning, and poison damage you take is reduced by three. Flat reduction. Um... You also found a pair of Coward's Sandals. Uh, one times per day, you may cast Misty Step as a reaction, using the sandals as the spell's focus and not consuming a spell slot. Doing so as a reaction to a melee or ranged attack will cause the attack to miss. Oh, beautiful. All right. Um... 
The next thing that you found in the Mimic's uh, chest was a Berserker's Embrace. Uh, this is a pendant. Uh, while you wear it, you gain advantage on all melee attack rolls. Um, in addition, all melee attack rolls against you also have advantage. You found a Ring of Protection. This grants plus one AC uh, and plus one to saving throws. You've also found the Shielding of Shadow. This is a plus one studded leather armor. Um, and with a command word, the armor will take the shape of any set of mundane or common clothing that the wearer pictures in their mind. Uh, so it's a glamour, basically. Yeah, it's a glamoured piece of, of magic armor. Yeah. There are also one, two, three, four potions. You have a potion of diminution, or dim, diminution, a potion of greater healing, a potion of poison, and a potion of psychic resistance. These are all straight from the book, um, regular potions. There are also one, two, three, four scrolls. We have a scroll of invisibility, scroll of mass cure wounds, scroll of bless, and a scroll of bane. Scroll of what is the last one? Bane. Bane. Oh. All right. So, like I said, lots oh. of stuff. Uh, what about the out. ring? Huh? The ring on the finger that I grabbed? Oh, that's not a magic item for the players. I mean, like, you could put oh, it okay. on and be cursed and become a dunce if you would like. <laughs> It will, it like it will reduce your intelligence level to, to that of, like, a preteen in California who spends all of their time, like, surfing <laughs> um, and gotcha, has no, gotcha. like, awareness of the real world. Okay. I'm going to keep that just in case it becomes useful later. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> so... Let's go back up to the top here. Now that you know what all the items are and what they do, um, would anyone like to claim the Blade of Radiance? Uh, is, that, is that a martial weapon? It is a martial weapon, yes. No, I'll pass. Yeah, I can't use it either. I mean, this would work well with when I'm wielding a shield, so I guess I could technically yep. take it. Sounds yeah, like you. it is yours unopposed. Uh, take the Blade of Radiance. Uh, next up is the Dancing Duo, the pair of animated short swords. Would anyone like to claim these? I, uh, I, I would I, feel I just, bad, but yes. I mean, I, 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 I don't want to take it away from anyone, but I'm just going to say that once I summon my skeletons, I could use them as their swords, and if the skeletons die, I, I still could basically have the swords keep attacking. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't want to take it away from anyone. Um, if we're not sure about an item, it would be fair, I think, for all of us to roll for it. Sure. That's what happens if no one wants to claim it. Seems like a generically strong item. It's, right, yeah. it's actually pretty strong, yeah. Okay. Uh, I would like D100s from all of you, then. 87. Looks like Mortimer got it. Beat. All right, Mortimer, you have yourself a dancing duo. Uh, the next okay. item is the Alchemist Cap. Would uh, anyone like to lay claim to the Alchemist Cap? I mean, Ron is an alchemist. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> yeah, if you wanted to take it, man. Yeah, but I want the Ring of Protection, though. I, mean, I don't want, yeah. I mean, I'll roll on the cap, I guess. It sounds like it's yours um, unopposed. No one else seems to be yeah, wanting it. I, I don't think I can wear it with the armor that I'm wearing, like, thematically. Me mechanically, I probably could, but thematically, there's not a fit there. Yeah, I don't yeah. think that really it's fits for me, either. All right. It's yours. Grand, please take an alchemist cap. Uh, the next item that you have is the coward's sandal. Um, would anyone like to lay claim to the coward's sandals? Absolutely me. Yeah, I mean, I already um, have my boots of freedom, so I can't couldn't wear them together. Definitely interest in the uh, sa sandals of strategic repositioning. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. 
I'll throw my hat. All right, sounds like we have three claims. Let's make some D100 rolls. Nice. <laughs> All right, All right, Alex. It looks like you will have the coward sandals. Uh, next up is the Berserker's Embrace. Would anyone like the Berserker's Embrace? I'll pass. I think Alex should have it because he has reach. Otherwise, it's borderline unusable for some of us. Um, yeah, I already have a pendant. I assume I can't wear both, correct, Greg? Right? Um, yeah, I, I would think that you would want to wear one or the other. Okay. Uh, if no one else is I guess you could be uh, two chains. I don't like as long as you have attunement <laughs> slots for it, why not? Yeah. Yeah, I if I can flavor flavor it, I will. Yeah, bling, flavor bling, flavor bling, it, two chains it. Yeah, why not? Yeah, sure. Okay. If no if no one else wants it, uh, it seems cool. Yep, go ahead. All right, sounds like it is yours. Cool. The Berserker's embrace. Uh next up we have a standard ring of protection plus one. Yeah, Gron yeah, definitely that. wants that. Same. Uh that's like a Same. party roll. Sounds like yeah. This is a party roll, one hundred percent. All right, D one hundreds all around. Oh, looks like that will be going to Norbert. Uh, Greg, I officially have thirty AC. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Um. Then we have the shielding of shadow. Would anyone like to claim the shielding of shadow? I don't. Well. Hmm. Uh, is this studded leather plus one? I that's worse than I have, unfortunately. So studded yeah, yeah, studded leather plus one, one is equivalent to what? Thirteen. Thirteen AC. Okay. No. No. Would you like? Would well, you actually, guys like to give this actually, away? Studded leather plus one means I can still dex with it. Yep. You'd still get your dex. Uh, so thirteen plus dex is the same as I think I have now. I mean, like, could, could, we, could we give sure. this armor to the uh, Cold Iron Company, for example, for some uh, uh, yes. rep? Yes, you could. So, I, I would, uh, I would uh, uh, do that, honestly. Um, I'm the party like to, to donate to this to the Cold Iron oh. Company? Sure. Okay. Unless, um, uh, unless uh, Alex wants it. Let, let, uh, let no, him count my, his AC. My heavy armor is 16 with plus 2 decks. I'll be going down a couple AC. I'm, I'm good yeah. to donate it to... Okay, yeah. uh, please take five reputation with the Cold Iron Company. I just want to say that you guys ruined my Cold Iron reputation number. It went from one to six. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we have a potion of diminution. What, what, what is that? Uh, it is from the book. The potion of diminution gives you enlarge or reduce, I believe. Uh, uh, looks like it gives you just reduce. You drink this potion, you gain the reduce effect of enlarge reduce spell for 1d4 hours, no concentration required. Uh, Give it to the council. Nobody wants reduce. Yeah, uh, I'd, I'd rather donate it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm sure there's some niche use for it, but it's good to... Yeah. Alright, uh, each of you please take plus five reputation with the Arcanium Council. Uh, wow. Next, we have a potion of greater healing. That's a party roll. Party roll. All right. Party roll. We donate. Okay. You're done All donating. Right. You've gained plus ten reputation. You have maxed out your donations. Right. That's good. Got a nice wow. one, bro. Nope. <laughs> uh, uh, that or was a D ten somewhere in there, Alex? Yeah. A D one hundred. Oh, no, Alex gets a. Uh, 81. Oh, an 81. I see you did roll it right after that. Okay, yep, 81. It is yours. We have a potion oh. of poison. Would anyone like a potion of poison? Yeah, Gron, that's his whole deal, right? He's he's mm -hmm. looking for poisons. Okay. So he needs that for his research. It's only RP-wise, but I, I don't think you, you're going to use the potion of poison for anything else in RP anyway. So. Yeah, yeah go for it. Okay, it is yours, Gron. We also have a potion of psychic resistance. Yeah, Just the uh, resistance roll, right? of psychic. Party roll. Okay, yeah, party, party roll it up. Round looking good. 85. Oh, Alex with 86. By one point, <laughs> the potion of psychic resistance go into you, Alex. 
Um, and then we have four scrolls. The first is the scroll of invisibility. Can I please have that? I can learn that spell. Yeah, sounds like a plan I, to I, me. Yeah. All right, Grand, it is yours unopposed. Thank you. Then we have. Can I, can a... I, can I use my gold uh, right now to learn it? Uh, yeah, no problem. So it's a uh, from a scroll. It's level two, so that's a hundred gold, right? Yeah. Yep. By the book, hundred gold, fifty per spell level. Uh, the next we have a scroll of a mass cure wounds. Definitely want that. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I think this one should be a party roll, yeah. This is good overall for everyone. Uh, looks yeah, like Mortimer more rolls highest. It is yours. Okay. Then we have a scroll of bless. Would anyone like a scroll of bless? <laughs> I'm good. I think um, these both bless and bane should go either to ground or uh, Alex, because otherwise both of us can cast these. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm yeah. Sure about um, do we want to split it up? Yeah. You take bless. Okay. I take bane or something. Thematically, that's perfect. I was going to suggest the same thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, then a scroll of bless for Alex and a scroll of bane for Grand. And that is all of our items from the giant Mimic fight. I hope the Mimic fight was worth it. <laughs> Thank you all for playing with me once again. Twitch chat. Um, thanks for sticking with us. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, uh, have a happy Thanksgiving if I don't see you again before the uh, Thanksgiving holiday. And uh, uh, have a great rest of your night, day, week, whatever it is till I do see you again. Uh, and I'll catch you next time. Peace, everybody. Peace. Peace. See you.